all make choices. But in the end, our choices make us. So choose wisely. Subscribe to It's Eric Nagel wherever podcasts are found. And leave a positive review. Won't you kindly? Meet me at the con. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear. It's Eric Nagel. Welcome to oh. another edition of It's Eric Nagel, live at New York Comic Con 2018. Eric is me. That is Matt OG. Hello. Giddles is over there. What up? Trevor is uh, wandering around in the drunken stupor after the Johnny Walker night. Oh Listen, my god, yeah. The Trevor commands an audience. He, he does. does. The people love him. Whether it's good or bad, he that's, commands that's an irrelevant. audience. Uh, show number two for New York Comic Con. Lots going on. Uh, Matt, how's, how has the booth been? Um, utter chaos and madness. We're, we're right on this awesome little corner in the small press expo, and uh, we have been slammed. It's a great traffic flow over here. No complaints. The only thing I wish we had closer was a bathroom. Yeah, you're a little far away. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, it's a good spot. Well, that's what the empty bottles are for, one. That's right. Uh, two, tell us about the artists that have been appearing at the table. Uh, so uh, throughout the course of uh, the weekend, we had uh, George Vega Art, who's a Marvel sketch artist. He does a lot of sketch cards for Marvel. He was hanging out with us. Um, we had Selena from over at the Jelly Empire was yep. with us. Um, Caesar, our friend Caesar, is an awesome tattoo artist um, in Elizabeth, New Jersey, but he also does a lot of prints and stuff for us. He was here doing, uh, he had a Turtles print this year and a Thanos print, Rick and Morty print last yep. year. Um, I think I think that's it. Did I, he do that um, Ren and Stimpy? He did. That's him. That's also. really awesome. Yeah, I that, love that one. Yeah, the great thing about Caesar is his style is so drastically different on each piece. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I really wasn't sure because I've seen his other pieces. I'm like, oh, that's like very specific. And then this one's like John K animation, right? Like, yeah, at, like art. It's really yeah. great. Caesar has, as the kids say, the talent. He has the talent. He has the talent. How are you doing, Eric? What is, how has your con been? My con, that first night was a living nightmare. I'll give you the quick version. So we leave the con on quick, Thursday. Quick version, yes. Right? Run over to Penn Station to catch the train to go back to New Jersey, and there's delays. And nobody knows why. And then all of a sudden, you see the uh, the board there with all the train schedules flip to cancel. And like everyone's freaking out what's going on. So the New Jersey Transit on Twitter is saying there was a 20-minute delay, but that was two hours ago. Ooh. But then NBC News tweeted out that uh, the local NBC News tweeted out that there was a train derailment and it blocked like four paths and this has been going on for three hours. It wasn't going to be cleared anytime soon. This sounds like the plot of a Stallone movie. Right. Yeah, a bad or that Stallone bad movie. Godzilla where he <laughs> lays the eggs in Madison Square yeah. Garden. Uh, so... Those hats yet? <laughs> so all these cancellations. Yeah, they're all here. There's <laughs> thousands of people. <laughs> nice. So stupid me is like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get a cab, but let me just go upstairs and take a look. Right. And Penn Station's surrounded by cops and ambulances. So not only are there not cabs, because there's ta- taxi lines there, uh, you can't even get Uber near you, because everyone's now, I looked at the app, there's nothing in the area. Right. So I hike it up several blocks up to Port Authority. You hiked figured, it up several blocks? Yes, Woo! I did. Like trying, to get, a trying to get a free ride. And uh, party. so that the third floor with the 300 gates had lines coming down the stairs. So I couldn't get up there. I'm like, I'm asking around, I'm like, what gate is this? And there yep. are other gates. So I just decided to be the, the guy I complain about in the cons. I just started cutting all the lines, went over to the gate, an hour wait to get on a bus, get on the bus. Me and this uh, girl who's dressed as Ray, full cosplay with yeah. the staff. She built everything. We're the last two on the bus. We have to stand near the driver. Oh, Jesus. So we're going down the ramp of Port Authority, through the tunnel, around the Helix, every local stop in Secaucus before getting to Secaucus. Oh, God. So everybody in the aisle has to get off, let people off, get back on eight or nine times before I get to the train station in Secaucus, where my car is. I go to the valet to get my car, and there's all these people there. It took about 45 minutes to get my car. But the valets were complaining to the people, you said 7 o'clock, you said 6 o'clock. You're gonna th-. It's like, do you not know, know what happened in Manhattan? The, the people couldn't get there to get their cars yeah. at this time. Believe me, I would have loved to have been here on time, sir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, 
get my car, get home. I just collapse and have to do it all again for the next day. Three and a half hours to go maybe 10 miles? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. So that's that, not that bad. That was the start to my con, but then everything got a lot better when the next morning, and I realized that one of the recorders was missing oh, for God. interviews, whether it was stolen or fell on out of a fall oh, out of God. a bag, whatever. I was getting all these texts from Eric at like one in the morning. He's like, I can't find the recorder. Where is it? I'm like, I did someone Freaking take out. it. So what happened? Shit show 2018. Yeah. Diddles gets here before I do the next morning. He goes over to the press room where we were in. And lo and behold, there it was, laying next to, like, wires and outlets. It was literally exactly where he left it, but the thing was, the recorder was sitting upside down, so if you walked in the room, it looked like a plug outlet, so no one would take it. But if it was flipped over the other side, I guarantee you a cleaning crew would have been like, yoink. So thanks to Giddles, you got to hear all the Stan Against Evil interviews. Huzzah. Thank you, Giddles. Oh, anything I could do for the show, But other than that, uh, not much shopping doing this year other than a couple of pieces from Diamond Select right. for uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and Funko. But that's it. I really, there really wasn't a lot here for me to, to, to get this year. So my goal this year was to not buy anything. How'd you do? I failed miserably. <laughs> oh no, what did you buy? Uh, honestly, I, it was a lot of prints. Uh, I bought a lot of art prints, which I, I, that's I mean, my downfall. I mean, it's the time to get it. It's my, it's my downfall. Yeah. I don't like buying art prints online. If I'm gonna buy them, I like buying them from the artist. I wanna talk to them, say yeah. hello, get them to sign it, whatever. Schmooze a little, you know, right. butter yeah. them up. And I'm friends with a lot of these. I went downstairs to a guy whose art I idolize. Like, he, this guy's name is Brian Fife. You'd probably dig his shit. It's really awesome. He does these like creepy horror noir, like, but they're sort of cartoony, but not. And I'm down there and I'm looking for his new piece this year. He puts out a piece every year. And he's like, hey man, how's it going? I didn't see you last year. Were you not here? And I was like, oh, he remembers me. Yeah. Oh, I felt special. It was Your lovely. heart went pitter patter. I did. I, I turned into a pile of fanboy mush. Did he give you any free art? He didn't. But I don't. I'll but, screw that. But to be, to be, <laughs> no. But you know what? To be quite honest with you, I wouldn't even accept it if he offered it for free. I would. I would rather pay him yeah. for his art than take it from him. But, but that's what, what if it said to Matt with love? XOXO hearts. How do you know it doesn't say that? Okay. Either? Well, it just says, would you have accepted it then? Maybe. Okay. It says <laughs> to Matt. Aw, gee. Aww. Aww. <laughs> 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 um, I think over there I see Brian Shea, our pal from Game Informer. Oh, is he bouncing around? Oh, yeah, bouncing yeah, around. Yeah, Let's go him. over and talk to him. All right, cool. Brian Shea is joining us, our pal from Game Informer. He's actually out here in New York. It's nice to see him instead of a disembodied voice over the phone or through Skype or yeah, whatever. A floating means. head on Skype. Yes. Uh, Morse code sometimes, depending where he is in the country. Smoke signals. Uh, yeah. Brian and, and Giddles were just talking about the, the food truck situation out front there. There's a lot of food trucks this year, more than in previous years. Uh, and the lines are still long. Yeah. These lines are way too long. But did you I'm guys actually shocked that they let them in here, to be quite honest with well, you. Well, they're they're in here and they're across the street. Yeah. Right from the from the Jeff Center. So everywhere you go, there's some different kind of food truck. Have you guys tried anything? We got the mac and cheese. Uh, it was really good. Like just regular mac and cheese? Yeah, they had or? classic. They had uh, mac and cheese bites, like the, the fried bites. Oh, oh, oh those, those are good. Those. And then they had the, uh, like you get like barbecue chicken, buffalo Ooh. chicken, uh, like ground beef, so like whatever, like you get all kinds of different meats there, but I just went classic. You try anything? No, I just got coffee and then whatever. Like, I got a free donut because I voted for the expanse on a thing. <laughs> they, were, they were like, I was like, how do I get a free donut? They're like, you got to vote. I'm like, does it matter who I, I vote just, for? And I voted wrong because I didn't want the strawberry donut. I wanted the black one. I don't know what happened. I just remembered. I got to finish that first season. I started it and I forgot to watch the rest of it. I don't even know what it's but about. But I, I hear good things about it and I've, I'm only a couple episodes into it. I mean, a lot of free people donut, love it. Though. Yeah, for the free donut, it's worth it. Yeah. Have you tried anything, Matt? Any no, food? I've been bringing food every day because yeah. I got smart this year. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the, even the lines for just going to Starbucks are uh, Starbucks are is even as bad, if not worse, than the actual food truck. Lines. Oh, a lot worse. Like I, I waited 40 minutes yesterday for my drink, and it was still not 100 percent correct. So Fuck that. <laughs> I didn't even ask to like fix it. I was like, I'll just use this. I'll well, well, other than the food, what has been your experience uh, here at New York Comic Con so far? What have you seen? Who have you talked to? Oh man, it's been busy. Like I'm here, here just kind of on my own, like not doing any work, but like I'm seeing stuff that I want to see. So I saw like the new uh, game from Remedy, 
which I'm excited for. It's called Control. They announced it at E3 last, or this this past time. Uh, it's people who made Alan Wake, people who made Quantum Break, uh, Max Payne, the first two games. Um, it's looking super cool. I'm really excited for that. They didn't show really any gameplay footage, but like they introduced the voice actors, and I got to talk to them yesterday. Uh, but yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, I played the new Marvel Battle Lines, I think it's called. How is that? Oh yeah, I played that too. It's pretty fun. It's, it's, a, it's a Marvel CCG game coming, or CCG coming to, yeah. uh, to it's mobile like devices iPads, and tablets. Yeah, iOS, Android. Uh, yeah, you just collect Marvel characters and kind of throw them out on a battlefield because they're, you know, they're cards. Like, yeah, they're, they're cards. Like Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's yeah. kind of like Magic. Hearthstone meets Magic meets Chess meets Connect Four. Yeah, like, they, it's all have, all... they all have unique powers and there's yeah. like hundreds <laughs> of cards. It's, it's, it's pretty intense. And it's, it, I know very little about the, the card game aspect, but they said it's a massive rollout. There's over 100 characters that they're putting out just when the app comes out. Oh, yeah. They said 200 characters. I might be wrong. I don't know. I, there's 10, like, deck leaders. I think like, that's like, what it was, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it, it's, it's intense how many characters they have. They, they don't have the X-Men franchise yet, though. Like, I've, from talking to uh, other developers who work with, like, the Marvel stable of characters, it's really hard to get, like, Marvel to license both like the MCU side and the X-Men side. Like you need to have a I wonder strong if that'll change going <laughs> forward. Oh, it will. Yeah. Like, I can almost now, but yeah. why yeah. would that be a problem if it has nothing to do with the movies? If it's the com based on because they're based on the comic books is what the guy well, told remember us. They, they were all based from yeah. the comic yeah, books. But so remember so why Marvel would be when uh, it looked like X-Men was just going to be at Fox forever. Remember, they started pushing the Inhumans more because yeah, right. they were like, all right, this is going to be our new X-Men that we have full access to. Right. And, and how did that go? It did not go did. well. Oh, I, mean, okay. I, th I thought it was a great success. <laughs> like a train off the tracks. Yeah, but they tried to like push the, <laughs> the, the licenses they don't own off to the side, you know? Like, we, what happened to Fantastic Four? Exactly. <laughs> they, just, they just killed them. Yeah, they just they say, finally right, well, are just bringing them back in the comic books now. Yeah. And that means maybe you see something at a in a credit scene after Avengers Four. I next don't think year. so because they don't own Fox. Doesn't own like the distribution. Like they own the publishing. They don't like it's something weird where like this like independent firm owns Fantastic Four. Oh rights, really? From my understanding, yeah. Oh, so, that's like, weird. Even Fox doesn't have like the final say of like we're gonna make a fi Fantastic Four movie. Uh, right. Well, that me, explains a lot. It, yeah. Let me let you in on a little something. Disney will make it happen. They've I'm got sure. the money, and they know people. Oh they have God. top men. <laughs> top men on this I, I hear. Top. I hear they send guys dressed as Mickey Mouse with baseball bats <laughs> to whatever building they have to go to, and they get it done. Yeah. Woo -hoo, come out of your house. Woo -hoo. Yeah. A lot of threatening Marks phone calls with the voice distorter that sounds like Mickey. That's it. That's it. Goofy's got a gimp bitch. mask on. <laughs> Suddenly <laughs> all dreams are possible. Yeah. You ever think back to like 10 years ago, like I, I thought about this the other day, 10 years ago, Disney did not own Marvel or Star Wars. Yeah. Nope. Isn't that insane to like think about like how different it was like just 10 years ago. It's a long, long time ago. And just how it's yeah. affected like just the cons too and mm -hmm. like in general and like all the costumes and the all arm. the merch and everything is crazy. Eventually all the cons will be owned by Disney. Yeah, exactly. I mean Disney has the D... 23, well, yeah. well, what, the Disney convention, right, yeah. D23. numbered uh, like the UFC style. They now uh, own the Star Wars, what is it, Celebration? Celebration. Star Wars Celebration. It's all through yeah. them. Marvel has had a huge presence both at New York Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con. Oh, yeah. As far as the floor, I'm not talking about like yeah, panels yeah. and things like that. They're, I mean, look, they're the whole entire center of the Javits Center. Looming over us. Within as the we next speak. 10 years, we'll be looking back at this and saying, I can't believe they bought Warner Brothers. I can't believe <laughs> that they own, you know, everything else. And this is now Disney Presents New York Comic Con. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, I tried to walk through there earlier, and I was walking by just as Daredevil was taking the stage. Oh, my God. It was standing I, room I only. thought I was going to die. I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. Like, there was just hands everywhere, people, and you couldn't move. It was insane. Yeah. What else have you seen uh, around here? Did you do any shopping? I did. I got some Overwatch stuff. Nice. I got... Uh, did you get the Mercy gun? No, I didn't. I got a, a little Pachamari keychain yeah. and a Winston little minifig. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, because I don't own enough Overwatch crap. I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have all the Figmas, all the Nendoroids, all the Pop Finals. Oh my god. Like, it, it's a real problem. It's a problem. Yeah. It's an issue. Um, <laughs> are you still going to be as heavy into Overwatch? I mean, obviously Fortnite hasn't uh, swayed you away from it, but now there's a lot of buzz with Fallout 76. Black Ops yeah. has got the Battle Red Royale Dead. feature now. Oh, well, that's it. Well, I'm talking about those style games yeah. like that. More and more uh, franchises are now seeing, like, look what PUBG did, look what Fortnite perfected, yeah, and now we're going to try to get in on all of that. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I'm looking forward to playing Black Ops 4. Uh, that Black Ops mode looks super cool. I didn't get a chance to play the beta, but I'm hearing amazing things about it. If I'm going to get into a Battle Royale game, I'm sure that's going to be it. Right. Uh, Fallout 76 seems like the kind of game where I'm going to sink a ton of time into it. Like It, it seems really cool. I love the Fallout franchise. Uh, the fact that they're going multiplayer, it, it, it worries me because their single-player games have a ton of glitches. Right. So the fact that this is going to be like server-based yeah. like frightens the hell out of yeah, me. I was going to say, that's a scary endeavor. But who knows? They might nail it. Like, yeah. uh, they, they're an amazing... It's been in development for a little bit, though, hasn't it? A little I mean, it bit longer an, than usual, right? It was announced this year. Oh, okay. At E3, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, who knows how long How long it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's going to be different because there's no NPCs and you're literally just playing against there, other people. I think people. there are going to be quest givers, but like, okay. yeah, but it, all your, like, people you're running around with are all real people. Yeah. Um, there's some cool ideas that they're implementing in there and, uh... It's going to be yeah. more like, wow. It's going to be a wild card for yeah. me, I think. Like, I think I could see myself sinking hundreds of hours into that, or I could see myself bouncing off of it and thinking, oh, that was a failed experiment. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Like, I haven't touched a controller that was connected to it for even a second. So yeah, we'll, so. we'll have to see that. I think Overwatch is going to be something that I just continue to play. Like, I've put, I think, 400 hours into it at this point. Nice. Uh, like, that's what my counter was. It was like 396, I think, last time I checked. Well, they say you have to, to be perfect at anything, you have to invest 10,000 hours. So you have a lot more to go. Even at this point, if I invested 10,000 hours, I would not be perfect at it. <laughs> That's That's eight year old right? just wreck you. Dude, like, I can't dude. even build in Fortnite. I just run away from the I squad and hope for the Fortnite. best. That's, yeah, I'm terrible at it. But I find myself, even when I'm, like, I'm done with Fortnite, I'm like, mm, going back to Overwatch. Like, at the end of the day, you're still like, oh, I'm going to go back and play yeah, you, Overwatch. You, you rotate back and forth. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're looking for Overwatch stuff. Um, our pals at Glitch Gear, a couple of aisles yep. over, have amazing Overwatch shirts, hoodies. Oh, They've God. got Diva's gun. You shouldn't which be it, telling me this. I, I already have admitted on. I have it's a, a problem. light gun <laughs> that you can, hook up, you can hook up with your phone or an iPad and use it like the old Nintendo lights app. Yeah, you, you can play <laughs> AR you can games play, with it. Yeah, you what? can play games with it. And, and it's, it's also a pointer. USB recharger. <laughs> so you have, the, you have the gun. It has a red, it does a red light, like the keychain thing. And so you can pinpoint what you're doing. The late thing wow. it recharges your phone while you're playing with it. And what's the <laughs> other gun they had? It was the Mercy, uh, yeah, the Mercy, Mercy pistol. The pistols over there as well. Wow. Hundred and one hundred fifty dollars respectively. Yeah, I think that I can resist that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to make myself resist that. That, that. that price point is are pretty good. The hoodies are awesome though. There's that, a that Lucio pink, hoodie. There's like what's the, the bunny one? What's or? the bunny? Well, Diva. That's Diva. Diva. All right. So there's a uh, all black shirt with a pink. Bunny spray painted on the. And I'm like, oh, nice. I so these are like that these one. are like custom made shirts. They aren't like they have the like, license. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also have all the like Aperture and um, all the other video game properties too. Yeah, they have a lot of the Valve stuff is over there. They had Bioshock, or they do have Bioshock, but they don't have it here. Mm. You can buy it off the store because I bought all of their Bioshock stuff. Of course, you do. Um, they have they have a um, a plush lemon grenade from Portal, from Portal 2, Two. Yeah. But you pull the string. And it's Cave Johnson yelling at you. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go back there and get that. If you want to see stuff that's not officially licensed, there's really nothing Fortnite around here except for what Glitch Gear has. They have three uh, Fortnite shirts. But there's a booth all the way at the end that Giddles introduced me to that it's just a piss poor iron on. It's like the ones you get at Staples and yeah, home yeah. prints, because oh. like the color differentation is like different between the patch and the shirt. It doesn't blend. It's so bad. It's so horrible. Oh, and no. then they have a thing where they have the uh, the Infinity Gauntlet for two dollars. You can take a photo with it. Ooh, yeah, what a Ooh, steal. Maybe steal. What? I know. Uh, anything else you're looking forward to before your time is up here at the oh, con? For a, like, what do you know. still have I've, to do? I think I've seen everything. Like I'm not even coming back tomorrow. I'm just gonna walk out into the city and hopefully be never seen again. You're going. At least go into a pub and watch UFC tonight. And, oh yeah. And drink yeah. himself silly. I saw a Conor McGregor cosplayer. At least I think it was a cosplayer. <laughs> well, he should be in Vegas right now. Yeah. So, so it's definitely, definitely a cosplayer. A cosplayer. <laughs> Today's the perfect day for that, though. Yeah. Brian, it's great to see you, man. We I never know. get to see you that often. You're rarely in New York. I know. It's been like five years. <laughs> so uh, we had to make sure that we got a chance to see you. And we're still uh, we're working out some details, but Brian's segment's going to be starting hopefully soon with hopefully us. Hopefully soon. Where he's going to be doing the Game Informer updates for our show exclusively. Nice. Sweet. So everything video games you want to know, you can reach out to Brian. He'll answer your questions. He'll give you all the updates officially from Game Informer. Anything else you want to plug? Social media, where you get your columns, all that? Uh, well, GameInformer.com is where you get our day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, Game Informer magazine is where you get every month. And then uh, just Game Informer across all social yeah. medias. And Sweet. 
Uh, the first weekend in November, we're going to be having our annual Extra Life stream, which is to benefit the Children's Miracle Network. Right. It's a 25-hour stream. I was, I was gonna say this thing where you got yeah, you guys go yeah, we crazy. Eat, we eat ghost peppers. We get pied like based <laughs> on donations. We got to make us wear miserable hats. <laughs> so based on the donation that they make, they can tell you what you guys yeah, can so do, it's or like, you give right, them options. It's like all right, if you donate fifty dollars, you can make us wear this outfit for like the next hour. Or, like okay, you have things. A thousand dollars. We'll eat a ghost pepper. Or a, <laughs> I don't know what the exact. Nope, things are this could year, but this keep, is like past numbers. If I, if I donate two hundred dollars, could you constantly hit somebody in the nuts with a fungo back? <laughs> I don't know if that would go over so bung, well in the planning. <laughs> For every swing, I'll donate two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like you can get pied in the face. I think that's like five hundred, or it was five hundred. And like you guys done this? I can do that. For how us. many years now? <laughs> oh man, it's been many years before my time with Game Informer. And it raises a lot of money. It's for a good cause. Last year we beat the sixty thousand dollar mark right over That's the course great. of 25 hours um we had people shaving their heads for donations i uh, i don't know maybe i'll do that this year i don't know you have such luscious locks <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna kind of ruin the whole mystique of brian shea <laughs> brian it was great seeing you is. man thank hey. you so much for coming to hang out with us here at the floor of new york comic-con i think we got to go over to nickelodeon yeah. and see our pal rob paulson Ooh. uh he specific i didn't know if we're like we just talked to him not too long ago we love yeah. Rob. oh we love we're rob. like well is it too soon is there enough going on so he calls up and he goes hey you're gonna be at the con i want you guys to come over and hang out with me so who are we to say you no? Don't, you don't say no when he asks you to come. Yeah. No. So we're going to go upstairs. We're going to go to the Nickelodeon area, and we're going to speak to our buddy, Rob Paulson. Ooh. You guys are young guys. This is amazing. <laughs> How it's changed. Look at this. Getting smaller and smaller. This is crazy. It's a portable four track and everything's isolated. Well, I picture like that, that on that Simpsons where uh, Krusty barges in and goes to do all his lines yeah. like really fast and then he, and he runs out and they're like, all right, we got the tape ready now and then he's already gone like they didn't record yet. <laughs> yeah. This, this is insane. Yeah. And I don't know. Anyway, forgive me. I no, just, no, it's fine. It makes me crazy. Well, we had it one time, but the microphone died, and I just pulled out my phone and hit record, and it was just as good as like having the recorder. Like it was insane. Oh yeah, I remember that. I it was for Nickelodeon. Show, <laughs> uh, I worked with David Copperfield on his show in Vegas, and he's got this little talking alien. And I've been working with him for six years on the show. Right. Every time, with the exception of the very first recording session that I went to Vegas to do, I record lines in my home with a. USB mic on my freaking iPad. Yep. No baffling, no nothing. And I always said, Dave, is that is Dave a freaking copper field? Yeah. Was like, that was fine to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got DJs who send it to me when they go on vacation. It's the same thing through the iPad. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. This works. Let's whittle it down even more. All right. Because somebody uh, not too long ago showed me this app that they can patch in uh, almost like an ISDN connection to a radio station oh, through nice. their phone or record stuff. I said, when did this come out? And they go, oh, people have been using this forever. It's just now publicly available. He said, some, uh, some of the cast of The Simpsons, like Harry Shearer, Harry. just does it into this app yeah. on his phone and sends it out to, uh, to LA. I, and so when you hear Mr. Burns and Ned and all that stuff, he's in, uh, he mean, was in New Orleans, New Orleans or something yeah. like that. And he just recorded into this app on his phone and sent it over. You don't even need to be in the same room anymore. Which, look, <laughs> we can argue that it takes away from oh, no, no. the feel. I prefer to be with the other yeah. apps. Yeah. But, uh, but this, like this, you guys are doing a, uh, you're a world-class broadcast, technically, the guest notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you're not dragging in a shit pile of equipment. That's nope. crazy to me. Not yeah, like anymore. These four are the biggest things you got to deal with. Yeah. Well, yeah. To be honest, there's a balance because it's not just bringing in the big equipment to set up everything, but it's also not like some of these bloggers and stuff oh, yeah. where they bring in the little Radio Shack plug-in mic and you know it sounds like an AM transistor no, radio. Yeah. yeah, you're right. There is a fine balance. It's professional. The thing that gets me is that you have professional quality broadcast stuff that people are going to be listening to this in their cars, their iPad, iPhones, whatever, and they're going to say, oh, that was great. That was fine. It's totally understandable. No static, no nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. professional quality, I'm just not, not looking professional. at a mixing board, yeah. yeah. Right, and it's not, you know, they're not cheap, but it's not going to cost you a hundred large in equipment. Oh, and no. another four people to haul it. Anyway, forgive it's me. It's professional just, quality, just not professional content. On, well, so. again, the guest notwithstanding. <laughs> oh, and the host notwithstanding, too. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we're here with Rob Paulson again, New York Comic Con. Uh, 
we just can't get rid of Rob Paulson. I, like I, I said, I'm like a herpes sore. Sorry, kids. <laughs> it's the best herpes sore. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how you been, sir? There's so much going on yeah. outside of your, your work that we need to discuss. Yes. If you're with it. Uh, I just saw your incredible video of you singing the national anthem. Thank you. You saw that. I did. How terrifying is that? You know, that, it was uh, actually a blast. I um, uh, My partner, Randy Rogel, who wrote most of the music that you guys would know from Animaniacs, and I, uh, a couple of years ago, got a really wonderful licensing deal with Warner Brothers by which we were able to take the music of Animaniacs around the country. Yeah, you did the tour. Right. In fact, this weekend, I'm here today with Nickelodeon, and then tomorrow Randy and I are doing our show up at the uh, Palace Theater in Danbury, Connecticut. Right. And then Sunday afternoon, we have a matinee at the Joe's Pub down at the Public Theater here in Manhattan. And you've oh, been awesome. doing Joe's regularly now. We, this is our, I think it'll be our ninth or tenth show at Joe's. Yeah. Great venue. And don't let the name, if you're in the New York City area, oh, don't man. let the name mislead you because you just think it's like a pub. Joe Pap. Yeah. But it, you, you go into the place, it's, it's got the classic, you know, brass rail bar. But it's also like a mini showroom. Oh man, Paul like Simon's been show there. Sting's yeah. been there. It's a great venue. Yeah, Melissa Manchester. It's so much really history. It's a couple hundred people. Very nice venue, and it's at the Public Theater, so it's a very uh, venerable venue. Um, but it, it turns out that last weekend, Randy and I were at Feinstein. Michael Feinstein's got a club here, I think, at the Algonquin, if I'm not mistaken, and he's got the same thing at the uh, Nico Hotel in, in uh, San Francisco. So it turns out that Randy and I were doing our show at the Nico last weekend. And one of the folks who does PR for the Giants is a fan. He said, hey, man, I know you're a sports geek, meaning me. And he said, would you like to sing the national anthem at the Giants-Dodgers uh, game? <laughs> Fucking A, hey, of course I would. Let me yeah. just pause you there for a second. When he offered that, did you think that you had to do it in a voice? Well, I asked because <laughs> I, I'm a patriot. And I would never, I mean, look, I, I got a great sense of humor. But I have too much respect for the anthem and for what it stands for uh, to assume that people would dig it if I sang it as Yakko. <laughs> so I was going to respectfully decline if he said, would you? I said, I'd be happy to, but, and he said, but, he said, but first, he said, would you sing it as yourself? Because I know you're a singer. I said, right. absolutely. Now, before I sang it, I said, you know, Hel hello, Giants fans. Hello, Giants fans. talent you've heard them for so long yeah. you know almost everything they do but you don't know what they look even this day and age when oh, you totally. have your phone and everything you never think to look up who the person who does the voice and why would they because they end up looking like me and who the hell wants right. to that screws so, it up for everybody Rob <laughs> goes out to the to the pitcher's mound and you know there's a uh, polite applause sure. <laughs> and then he does that and the place goes I know who that is. <laughs> the yeah. whole stadium just goes. And then you got before him. You, yeah, yeah that, you got him. And you know, you could all, you, you could be a combination of Fergie and Roseanne and still have him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I had a couple of clinkers, but one of the things I, I didn't, you can't get used to until you do it, is that there's a giant echo. Oh obviously. yeah. Obviously, even though they had a real time monitor in front of me, you get this huge bounce back. But it was a privilege, and uh, I was thrilled to do it. 
I immediately watched it because Randy Rogel videoed it for me and I thought, all right, it's passable, so I'm gonna send it to the Red Wings and the Lions and the Tigers because I'm from Detroit and I want them to call me up and say, if you can get here, we'll have you sing it at you know, Ford Field. But thank you for saying that, Eric. Well, you, it was you also... You also killed the two important hurdles for the song. What's that? Well, there's a third oh, one. I got Remembering the, right. the lyrics, but yeah, that's the other <laughs> two one. That's is it. the Rockets' red glare. The if people hit that off key, they start booing. Yeah. And then at the end, right before the big finale, our flag was still there. If you don't hit that right too, yeah. they start booing you, even though you're you're bringing it in for a landing. Yeah. You can't win unless you hit those two those two hurdles, and you and you you, you nailed it. Well, thank you. Uh, the certainly uh, that makes me feel better because. I thought the applause was, well, you gave it a good shot and you didn't forget the lyrics, but I'll choose to believe your version and yeah. say that they thought it was a good rendition. I, I'm, I, I honestly, um, I, I really am very uh, privileged to do it. Um, I am only a second generation American and I am the grandson of immigrants from Macedonia and Denmark. So uh, I and my siblings, just like millions of other people, right here in New York are the product of people who had the guts to come do that and moreover uh, a country which embraced them so mm -hmm. I have nothing about which to be um, uh, anything but grateful and so I'm, I'm very very thankful that they gave me that shot thanks for talking about it final final thing on that um, what's it like being in an opposing team stadium when you grew up in Detroit you're a Detroit sports fan yeah oh they beat the daylights out of the Tigers <laughs> <laughs> Justin Verlander went there and spoiled it like a spent you know what yeah and and then luckily he went to Houston and won a he well he got he got married to Kate um, um oh no you said the it. model Kate Moss no 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 it was no, no, Kate no, the or, one with the her her grand her we'll just say the hot one yeah her uncle I was Kate. Kate Hudson but I no, no 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 was it Kate I forgot but I anyway and then he won the World Series. He deserves it. But yeah, the they, uh, the Giants beat up on the Dod on the Tigers a few years ago. But I'm an LA guy, and my you know I like the Dodgers when I'm in LA, and they're uh, they're playing now. Giants are not, and they beat the Giants pretty handily. And I I told Phil Lamar, who's a big Dodger fan, he was watching. He said, Robbie, that was you singing the anthem. And I said, Yeah, if they lose, <laughs> don't blame it on me, but they won. So uh, yeah, it was a big deal. Does uh, Phil want to come out and sing the song now? Is he like, I oh, want to yeah. go and do it? I totally would. Honest to God, it was so much fun. But I'm a performer. I love that. I, I like, and it was very, uh, it was nerve wracking. But I I enjoy that. Did well, they give you any like cool swag? Like I sung the national anthem and all that. No, I got they this didn't. But you know what was really or... cool was that every kid, and they were kids, who uh, got me ready, who met me at the park, who told me, here's where you stand. Every one of them knew what I did and it was so delightful because I had all these kids and I said hello nurse or narfer <laughs> and they all smiled or turtle power and it was just the most wonderful experience that's so awesome. cool I just thought of this too now you know the last thing you need to do is throw out a first pitch and that oh, yeah. never goes well for 90% of the people right well Sean Aston's done that a couple of times and I don't have a very good gun. I'm a hockey player, man. I, I if they gave me a puck, I could definitely get it. To Wham! Put the ball, put, put the ball down on the rubber, right. and just uh, do a little flick to the I catcher. I could definitely flip it to the catcher. That's not a problem. That'll get you flipping some it, booze. Flipping yeah. it 60 feet is not a problem. Throwing it in the strike zone 60 feet, that's not, you know. That's hard. If you've never been to a major major league baseball, oh, if you've never been to a major league baseball park, when you're standing at pitcher's mound, it's a long way. And I got to see, because they let me stick around for the game, we got great seats, um, I got to see Clayton, you know, a first ballot to be sure, a first ballot Hall of Famer, even though he's still in his, eh, maybe not his prime, but he's a world-class baseball player. Jesus, when you see a guy who can really bring it, then, and you see how far it is, that's a way different animal. Well, if you could throw a ball 100 miles an hour, that 60 far? feet, and oh, it's yeah. still going 100 miles an hour, that's yeah. pretty That's pretty it damn is. good. I went to my friend's birthday party, and he was like, let's throw me the football, and I was like, I'm out for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just sitting on the floor, like, writhing. Oh, no, no, and that's why I, because I got to play hockey um, uh, with a lot of ex-NHLers, some uh, ex-New York Rangers, Ronnie Duguay, Mark Messier, I played hockey with these guys at um, um, fundraising events. Coulier, myself, Richard Dean Anderson, Matt, um, Matt Dennis Perry, Leary does a lot of those too. Dennis yeah. Leary, Michael J. Fox. Um, Mike Myers Alan too, Thick, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mike Myers. Um, and when you get a chance to play with guys who've been retired for three or four years, but they can still really. That's like your fantasy camp kind oh of thing. Oh my God. Yeah. 
and they all have kids and grandkids. Gordy Howe, God rest his soul, is my hero, and all his grandkids love Ninja Turtles. That's when it's cool. Lanny McDonald called me to my home years ago and said, hey, Robbie, it's Lanny from up in Calgary. Like he had to remind me who he was. <laughs> Hall of Famer, you know. My there, kid's having a birthday party. Would you call him as Raffaele? And I'm like, yeah, Lanny. Why not? It's we, cool. There, we got to wrap up. But we, we didn't even get to. We've oh, been talking shit, sports. So sorry. It's okay. sorry. We haven't even gotten <laughs> it's my to. my fault. I'm we talking. We haven't gotten to the, the new Ninja Turtles project. Yes, we please. Get to. So I got to ask you this. So one, why are they rebooting it so or redesigning it so close to the other one? And two, what made you take on a voice director role as opposed to being a voice in the show? They're rebooting it so, uh, so soon because uh, Viacom knows what they have. Uh, they bought this franchise, I think around 2010. Right. And the first thing they did was the one I just finished doing Donatello on, which was by any judgment, an unqualified success. Sold product, got great ratings, got great reviews, mm -hmm. and was embraced by uh, fans of the original show right. and their children. Yeah. Then, and they did, we did 120 episodes. Then, two of the people who worked on that show, Ant Ward and Eddie Suriano, were charged with this new version, and they immediately wanted to go and do something different. I give a lot of credit to Nickelodeon and Viacom for doing that, because they could have ridden that turtle or that pony for longer and squeezed more. Well, that's what I was saying. It, it wasn't like it was past its prime or jumped no. the shark, whatever term you want. It was still gangbusters. But, the merchandising but, was still strong. Right, but think about what you're saying. That's a that's ballsy. To go out on top? Yes. That's gutsy because people can make the argument that the original show that I worked on really maybe went a little further than it should have. Well, for, and, uh, real and, quick, and, for those and, who and don't know. they were know. trying to squeeze blood from a turnip. They didn't do that at Nick. That's a lot of guts to do that. Rob worked on the original animated TV show back yep. in the 90s yeah, for Ninja it, Turtles. Then he arguably, was brought back for the new one. Right, and arguably that first one became essentially half-hour commercials to sell action figures. Right. Yep. I'm a capitalist. I get it. <laughs> but Nickelodeon didn't do that. They chose to say, all right. No, we there know was what great we got. storytelling in right. it. Right, yeah. and we now have people who are qualified and we're going to go to a 2d version with great animation and now the fans can watch it with hd 4k technology yep and i'm going to tell you Wait, something man. so the last nickelodeon series wasn't uh for oh yeah it was okay. all 4k but it was cgi this is 2d now oh, so okay. you're talking so about saying. watching yeah, yeah. Car uh, cartoons that were made in the in the way that were when i was a kid but you're watching it with broadcast quality that was unmatched right there's nothing i'm 62 years old and i can still do my job at a high level but if you're talking about a fan i'm watching stuff now that i never could have imagined watching it at this level so kudos to nickelodeon for giving aunt and andy and this incredible group of actors and artists a shot at doing it when they could have stuck around and done it longer in the old version, but but they didn't. That's that's a gutsy move. All right. So as we go out, then the part two of it is how come you're now voice directing instead of participating? Because in it? they lowered their standards for voice directors. <laughs> no, honestly, because Gene Vasileros and Ant and Andy were kind enough to throw me a bone. And make no mistake, that's what they did. I don't draw them. I don't write them. Uh, but I have been around, and you can argue that as far as actors go, there aren't too many actors in Hollywood who have a deeper connection and understand the mythology and the ethos to Ninja Turtles and uh, and at the risk of sounding self-aggrandizing I think that's true and the actors now Brandon Omar Josh um, uh, uh, Ben and and, and um, Kat all have such respect for me if for no other reason because that they expect respect their elders so I'm in a really unique circumstance I have the credibility with an audience, a turtle audience specifically, but these actors grew up watching everything I've done. So in this realm, I have their respect. No, they would never be disrespectful anyway because they're nice people. But practically speaking, I have that. But I also have respect with the audience and I think it makes sense to take a flyer on me. Um, and so far, knock wood, it seems to be working, but man, I, I've really hit the lottery and I owe Ant and Andy and Gene and Nickelodeon, an incredible debt of gratitude. And you guys for sticking around and giving me another crack at this. Of course. Oh, anytime. Uh, let's uh, end with the plug there. When uh, tell, Give us all the information where everyone can see the new show, when, all that stuff. Nickelodeon, uh, it's, isn't it, is it Mondays on uh, uh, Nickelodeon? Saturdays, okay. Saturdays at 11. 
10 o'clock. I'm like not even. You weren't even close. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I watch them. Saturdays at 10 o'clock on Nickelodeon. Set your DVR. Set your DVR. New episodes premiere every Saturday, right? And uh, Maurice LaMarche and myself are also acting in the uh, series as recurring bad guys. Oh, awesome. Uh, and um, that's pretty cool to have Pinky and the Brat as bad guys. I love Maurice, <laughs> but I love you two together. Thank you. It's like an we old comedy too. team, like an Abbott Costello kind of Thank situation you. when you two are, are working together. Tell him not to be a stranger. Tell him to come to New York well, sometime. He's going to be here. He for is? Our, for our discuss Can I tell him that? I guess I can now. This so. is airing Monday. So. <laughs> well, I've already opened my mouth to change feet. But yes, Mo is here with us, and today at the you're going to be at the at the, at the thing this afternoon. I don't know. We have so we, many other interviews. Right, I don't well, know if we'll be able to make it. Then you'll probably see Mo walking around. Okay. All right. But um, yeah, it is a big deal to be anywhere with Maurice Lamarche. He is, he's one of those guys that he is the high tide that raises all boats. He makes me way if better. If you ever could put in a good word, oh, to I'll say, tell him today. It's like, look, we'll treat him right, and we just want to pick his brain, and, and not or pink his brain. Pink. Oh. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna. One. I can't even continue. That's How about that? We go out with. The old mouse still has it. <laughs> good night, Rob Paulson. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Eric. Thank Thanks, you. you guys. What a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Greetings, my friends. This is Pinky and the Brain, and you're listening to It's Eric Nagel. You did that very well, Pinky. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. No, you blew it. Well, guys, got to make a living. The Pinky, the Pinky and the Brain, 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 Brain. brain. No. It's Eric Nagel at New York Comic Con. We're on the floor of New York Comic Con 2018. Uh, it's Eric and Giddles. What Matt's up? Matt's back running the booth. Yep. Trevor, I think. I don't know where Trevor is. Uh, he, had a bunch, he had a bunch of scotch and ran away, so who knows where he is. Yeah, we just left the uh, after the Rob Paulson interview. We went over to the Game of Thrones Johnny Walker event. For their White Walker scotch. Right. Uh, we went in there. It was pretty much a pop-up ice bar. Yep. You got to uh, sample a couple of shots. You got to take uh, some kind of custom photos with the Johnny Walker guy in the Winter Walker uh, scenery from yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, it was the, it was the uh, the Johnny Walker guy as like the White Knight or whatever the 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 King Knight guy, the Night the King. Dude, yeah, 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 it was like him, like hey, like, Mr. Walker to you. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Walker. So we well we left that and we're walking around and we decided to, let's go to the other side of the Javits Center, which we hadn't explored too much. And as we're walking through the aisles, we're hearing heavy metal. The best now it's not un oh, it's not unusual to see some heavy metal guys at Comic Con, but there really isn't a huge heavy metal presence at Comic Con. So, well, Giddles, you're a metal fan. There's a, there's a, a, a decent amount. There's like a couple of booths, but it's oh, it's not like it's not like a music festival, obviously. Right. Like, you know, there's like cool theme stuff. Like there was a whole Iron Maiden comic book section, which I thought was awesome. And it's like all the Adventures of Eddie and just like. <sighs> craziness that so kind of stuff. we're walking over let's follow the music we walk over <laughs> and what do we find it's the butcher yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. sean the butcher <laughs> our pal uh currently on liquid well, actually i think he owns liquid metal uh, now yeah, he on is Sirius on, XM, on liquid metal yeah or yeah, just yeah. does all the work yeah and yeah. none of the pay for it <laughs> um so butcher is kind of a big deal now i guess butcher yeah, sure. started out as one of my interns with at uh opie and anthony back Way in the back xm in the day, days 11 years ago and then wow. he was with us for the merger and somehow some weird shenanigans came around and it was just a mutual thing that sean might be better in the music department that's not taking taking anything away from what he <laughs> did with this us. this day, I still do not know what went down. I just know I got moved and other people got let go, and I'm just happy that I got moved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, That's always the move. Yeah. When I, they shuffle everything around, you're like, oh, I'm still here. Yeah, this is yeah, great. Yeah. I can honestly say this. I haven't done this for a lot of people, but I went all out vocally and to make sure that Sean was taken care of. I really felt and like it was you that helped me. It was so me thank and you. one other person. Yeah, I would think it would be one other person as well. Yes. yes. And, uh, I appreciate you guys. We'll say, <laughs> it's Opie. Uh, that really cool. went and said you can't get rid of Sean. He I'm didn't flattered. do anything wrong. After 11 years I'm finally figuring yeah. this out right now at Comic Con. So thank you. It's all get, literally coming full circle right now. Yeah. Because remember, when we, remember when we got to Sirius after the merger, yeah. they were telling us about all these other music channels. And if you guys want to do a shift on the other channels just let the program director know and yeah. they'll put you on and yeah. and what have you we're like yeah cool so we got a show to do 
then Sean wants to do stuff with liquid metal, with Ozzy's Boneyard, yes. with all these Faction. things. Yep. And he, so he was uh, moonlighting here and there. Uh -huh. And then it was like, you know what, maybe Sean might be better suited over there. Yes. And once we let him go, it's probably the best thing that ever I happened flourish. to him. I definitely flourished. But the best thing that ever happened to me because of that was me stop was calling you Sean Cena. Sean Cena, <laughs> okay. which I still get till this day. Till this day. <laughs> but grinding my teeth on the ONA show and the constant, like, the, the 45 minute ass tearing sessions the that I would get on bullets, air. Yes. Oh, not yeah. even just me getting shot at like not even dodging bullets <laughs> uh, that hell that I went through Picture every, him doing the Matrix move, but every bullet every still bullet hitting is him. Hitting oh, me. He's exactly. moving into the way. And of every bullets. bullet is thrown by Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, and Obi, and I'm just eating it all up. But <laughs> being terrible back then made me much better now, and I feel that I like I, I use it as bragging rights. Like, yeah, I made it through two years, Obi and Anthony. I somehow survived. I'll and, tell you the same exact thing. Yeah. All those years of working with ONA and. Taking my lumps on the air and yep. taking my shit behind the scenes mm -hmm. and then no, bringing you new didn't, stuff. You didn't no, take not anything, even one Eric, lump not on air. Yeah. Yeah. This or wasn't, still, this wasn't yeah. a humble. <laughs> the show this being wasn't around. a humble brag. This was an actual fact that I learned to take all of that and use it for other things, mm -hmm. and it made those other things so much better by going through the uh, you know through the good and the bad the of grinder the of yes. Opie and Anthony. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know we were fortunate enough after we left Sirius XM. Two weeks later, IHAR picked us up. Yeah, and congratulations too on that. Thank I'm very, you. very stoked for you guys. What's it like being yeah. back on the on the other side of radio? I mean, it's the same <laughs> as it's always been. I mean, nothing has changed. It's all the same crap. I'm still dealing with the same stuff, but I get to hang out here at Comic Con with my man Vertebrae 33. Shout yeah. out to Vertebrae 33. He's an amazing artist. He's a heavy metal artist, and I'm the heavy metal guy at Sirius. We've been teaming up for a while. He did the design for my uh, website, right. Tales from the Crypt, which had a crappy like five dollar just to get the website. Launch, I needed a cool design. I got the worst five dollar design I could get every day for the Did last. Did you go to Fiverr? Yeah, I went to Fiverr <laughs> every day for a year. I've been looking at it and hating my logo. So I knew my man. He does logos for WWE and everything. So I was like, "Can you please make me a new website logo?" And now I got a sweet new sticker. Sitting here handing out stickers, cutting breaks for Liquid Metal, having a good time, hanging out with E Rock and Gittles. This is awesome. This is All right, awesome. let's break. Uh, enough with the reminiscent of the yeah, things yeah, yeah. of the past. Let's yeah. talk about what you're doing now here. So a lot of information was just thrown out. Yes. Let's break it down. Yes. One. What is your website, Hails to the Crypt? Hails from the Crypt. Hails from the Crypt. Yeah, so I do a lot of interviews and, uh, you know, they'll air for maybe a week. On my website, they live forever. So I've done interviews with a bunch of heavy metal dudes, Guar and Vane and Dillinger nice. Escape Plan. Wonder and who told you to save those interviews and put them in other places. Yes, yes, for, for <laughs> posterity, yes. Because they was doing a lot of interviews and they were on the channel and I said, what are you doing without yeah, those interviews? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when those interviews are done. Exactly. Uh, I just have them. I'm like, you really should put them yeah. somewhere else. So now it's a one-man operation. I learned video editing. I learned video grab. I'm trying to like build my brand. Uh, but it's a one-man operation, but I got I got cool dudes like you guys and my man vertebrae 33 and people who are like willing to help me out because I'm too stupid to like I don't know anything about HTML and WordPress. Oh, it's and, too hard. Oh my god I would so much rather pay someone and I'm not having any income so like just out of the kindness of their heart and maybe like a little chronic like yeah, here's a joint <laughs> like yeah. you want to like help me out and they're always no one's turning down chronic <laughs> Well, that's the thing. There's people who went to school for that, and it's just yeah. like, you know what? They're going to do it better, so yes. I'll just give them the money and let them do it. Like, yes. That's what they're good at. Yes. You know? well, it is a lot of fun. I have that same issue, and people said, it's like, you grew up in that age where everyone was learning to make websites. How do you not know how to make a website? I'm like, I do, yeah. but the programs I learned on don't exist anymore. Yeah. I'm talking like Dreamweaver when people were doing Dream Flash Weaver. animation. I don't, yeah, exactly. You know? And I'm like, that, nobody Weaver. does that shit anymore. No. I was like, if it doesn't function like Facebook, I'm not going to know how to use it. <laughs> so they, they set me up, and now I kind of just update the website so hailsfromthecrypt.com it's where I put up and I started doing photography to keep myself from going insane so I take pictures now since I get access to all these like bands Earl? that can do these interviews yes Earl is back do you know Earl is back I, I know I walked I through heard. the hallway I was like holy shit it's Earl that's awesome I'm very, it's cool to see him around. he's like I never left I was trapped in a yeah, room for like exactly. months exactly it's nostalgia <laughs> seeing Earl around Earl was just sleeping in the office nobody yeah. knew <laughs> somebody threw a t-shirt over him and that's where he was for years yeah. Yeah. it's all pictures and interviews on my website that's basically I'd like to expand but I mean I don't know everyone says do a podcast like, I could listen to you guys talk for an hour. I couldn't listen to me talk for an hour. I Why? just, I'm, I don't know. I we know don't how, listen to us talk for an hour. Uh, Other people listen yeah, to us talk for an hour. I don't want to listen to myself talk when I talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I should get into the podcast thing. I just, it's just. Here's the thing. Yeah. Everyone says that, but look, 
it's a weird time and it's a great time to yeah. do it because it gives you the freedom to do what you want exactly. and accelerate. And a lot of these little niche programs have blown up. And I mean, look at our look at our pal Joe Rogan. Yep. He got it from Anthony. He used to just come on our show all the time. Yep. So what Ant was doing is like, I can do that. And his, now he's the biggest he's guy the in the world. He's yeah. the guy, yeah. But not everybody turns into the biggest uh -huh. guy in the world. You're not gonna going to be Mark Maron. You're not going to be Nerdist. You're not going to be Get Joe Barack Rogan. Obama on your It's <laughs> yeah. not going to happen ever. It's not yeah. Right. <laughs> so everybody goes and does a podcast. Yeah. But kind of look at it, 95% of it are not good. And I'm not saying we and are, exactly, but I'm exactly. just saying not good. But you got to keep be at another it. Another drop in that ocean of podcasts. That's just like what? It, what? I don't know. I don't. Right. I feel yeah. like I get more, much more. If out you of the find a, if the, you find something that, all right, Jamie Josta, yes, right, yes. was a regular well, on ONA, still podcast. do, yeah, yeah, all that. Uh, good friend to all the shows that mm -hmm. we were a part of. Still does stuff for Sirius. Yep. Still stuff stuff for you guys. Has an amazing podcast that he does when he has time yep. from not doing Hate Breed or other tours yep. that he's doing. Mm -hmm. But he's doing very well, and he has a different spin on it. Chris Jericho, professional wrestler, yeah. who was also a rock star. I think bigger. Actually, no, he's pretty big in everything he does. He's also the yeah. greatest on the mic ever. Yeah. So yes. I would give that dude a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but look at what he did. He just went and started doing it yeah. like other people do. Because yeah. wrestlers and rock stars are not that different. They're on the road. They're living at hotels. They're bored. They turn on a microphone, and they just, just record it. And, it. and it blows up from there. Yeah. If you can find your angle to it, That's what I'm that trying makes to sense. If you're just going to do it because everyone yes. says you should do I don't it. I want to be like, it's Tuesday. I woke up, uh, I scratched my dig, and yeah. I went to work for or eight the ones hours. Where you get four guys that you all know, and you're sitting at a table, and the mic's over yeah, here. Yeah, and it sounds kind of yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no. We're a radio. We're in the business of collecting audio, and like I make and sure that and making it my, sound good yes, and entertaining. Exactly, exactly, and it's difficult, but it's cool. But you know, that's why I love my job because I get to edit dudes like Ozzy Osbourne and make Ozzy sound like he's making sense. So you get once, to take all the ums and yes, the uhs and, and just the. Uh, yeah, and once I feel I can do that, I feel accomplished at my job, and I, I have you guys to thank for all that. Well, let's touch on uh, the stuff you're doing still at SiriusXM. You're doing um, liquid metal. Liquid metal every weekend. I'm on from six to midnight. Uh, Eastern. 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 Do you remember, time. you're an international yes, company. I, know. Yeah, I always say Eastern. This is the first time I didn't say it. Do the we, Pacific. We have our I don't uh, three hours, so three. Oh, let me tell you what's three Pacific. Up. Yeah. Let me give you another little piece yeah, of advice. Yeah, yeah. The little things are we're gonna make you stand above everybody else. Yeah. As good as you are, uh -huh. add some more little nuances to it, some little layers, and yeah. everybody go like, wow, that guy is really good at what he does. So when you promote yourself. Because you're on Sirius, which is on in the United States and Canada, and Canada. Right? always Eastern. But East Coast, West Coast, you yeah. always give like if you're on 6 p.m. Eastern, you're 3 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always give both. Okay. It makes you sound bigger yes, than you yes. are. I always say Eastern so people do know when I'm on because I used to not say it, and then people would miss my interviews completely, and it would go fly completely under the radar. But right. uh, six to midnight Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, and then we have our monster, the trivia show, Into the Trivia Pit, which we do every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Is that the live one? That is the live show. I've I've heard it a couple of times Dude. before they shut my account off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my password. Where you, can, you can lock it in the app. I would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of waiting for the YouTube guys. I know. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but that's our baby. We built that from the ground up. It used to be an hour-long talk show on the music channel called 666 Live. We'd have a topic. And like he wanted to make it like a talk show, but you can't have a talk show on a music channel because people hate it. Yeah. So we split it into half talk, and I was watching Billy on the Street, and I was really obsessed with Billy on the Street. So I was like, why don't we do like a trivia show? So it was half talk show, half trivia show. After like six months, we scrapped the talk show, and it became just a trivia show, and it's into the trivia pit. And it's it not has, called Butcher on the Street. No, nice. it's not called Butcher on the Street, but <laughs> that would be awesome. That'll be maybe that'll be my angle what for my podcast. What about Nicole on the Street? I don't think anyone's using that. <laughs> Which one's Nicole? Mashup. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, Beyond me. Look, yeah. that's the right answer. You shouldn't know what yeah, that I is. Don't. I don't. If it's below channel like 35, I don't go no there. Idea. I don't touch it at all. <laughs> but dude. oddly it's enough, basic cable. But oddly enough, but you're really into the 40s on four. Yeah, you know, or I wherever just, they I, moved it to. Yeah, now. I love all those old school channels. That's you know, that's my bag. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I work on liquid metal, but I'm jamming out to the 40s all the time. That's yeah, what we need. Bob More Dillard heavy metal, metal 40s covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. If you can start doing some mashups of like, you know. Uh, I don't want to bash Benny up Goodman and you know Guar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That might that might work. We could have an angle with that. I'm trying to do more hip hop and metal. That's what I love. I love nice. more hip hop and metal. Not like I don't know. Not Glenn like Miller this. Orchestra and Biohazard. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Cypress to do the thing with the uh, the orchestra like they did from The Simpsons. They were teasing oh, yeah. that for a I, while. I heard that they might do it. I was like, I will fly to California if that. I would. Do I would go to see yeah. Cypress Hill with the London Symphony <laughs> Orchestra. Yes. 
All kinds of yes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. This is music I can listen to, Marge. <laughs> yeah. She went, this I like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the greatest. So, you're, you have the, so you have that. Trivia show, uh, Liquid Metal, Hails from the Crypts. I mean, I think that's it. Are they like sending a, you to many events? I've been going, I've been working like uh, on-site broadcasts. I was in North Carolina. I did Carolina Rebellion for Octane. It's all audio editing. Like, I get to like, you know, I'm hanging out backstage, but like I'm editing audio for like seven, eight hours a day. But if there's bands I want to see fucking Power Trips playing, Code Orange is playing, I got an all-access pass. I got kind of got like a big swinging dick there. I can kind of just like stand on stage, watch the band for four or five minutes. I get to watch three, four songs, but then it's like, I'm getting texts like, yo, where are you? We need you, like whatever. You know, the usual serious drama, everyone's panicking over nothing. <laughs> yeah. Are well, they uh, paying you any better? No. No? No. It is, it is. we just bought, we just bought Pandora, those are big, we just bought Pandora. I I'm know. sure my bonus is gonna. All right, there's no T in it, it's Pandora. I said Pandora. You Pandora. said Pantora. Pantora, Pantora, Pantera, <laughs> Pandora, whatever. Uh, so I'm I sure would, my I bonus is I would subscribe to Pandora. If Pantora, it was just yeah. Like, it's just yeah. Pandora just keeps playing Pantera songs. Like, what are you doing? Downloads from hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I don't know what that's gonna like mean, but I'm sure that means my bonus goes like flying right through the paper shredder. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to speak too soon because then okay. I'm gonna get it. I'm, I'll feel like an asshole. Maybe you can get one of those deals through Squarespace for the ads on Pandora yeah. to get yeah, your exactly. website Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'll pay for my own bonus. Does anyone there give a shit that we all left? You know. Or do they all just pretend that we never paint over the rooms like we two never existed? Corner offices we had. I think they're like cursed. Yeah. I think that everybody, nobody ever said hello to us. Everybody usually just walked past those offices, or no one said hello to me. I don't know right. if they talked to you guys, <laughs> but like, I don't know, there's bad juju in those two corner offices. So I think, you know, there's a show that this, this show that's going on there right now. Uh, however long that show is going to be on, and I think once that show, I think they just signed another two years. I heard about that. I heard about that as well. Uh, but I think once those two end offices are completely done, yeah, they'll probably just b block it well, up. I'm not talking about it. those two because I don't see Bennington going anywhere. Yeah. But um, it was like as far as you know, after Opie was pretty much the last yeah. to leave, I and then I left were, shortly after that. Yeah, I, I think just. I don't no think one we were cares. ever that liked to begin with yeah. by anybody under the whole ONA name. No offense to whatever, but like just because we were Opie and Anthony, and we just came from like we were the we XM, were the yeah. we were the stepchild they had to take care uh -huh. of. Yeah. We were Caddy Day when they let all the caddies into the pool in Caddy Shack, and then it's just like there's duty, duty, duty everywhere. Yeah, there was shit yeah. everywhere. <laughs> But I'm glad to see that you're still doing your thing and doing doing better. Well, thank you. I'm sure you're getting paid better and living better. You think? Yeah, but... No, but not. Never. And that's the thing. It's like every time you're like, oh, what do I do? I can't stand it. Do I leave it? And it's like you're not going to get paid anymore. No. It's like it is what it is. Well, here's what I'll here's some no one pays anything here's something anywhere. I'll tell you about when you leave. It's not about money. It's about passion. There's no full time kind of concept <laughs> anymore in radio because they're really leaning heavy on just making the radio station a playlist. Yeah. And it's weird because they've eliminated so many personality programming. That's what sucks about Some playlists. companies have been firing morning shows, which is supposed to be the last bash. And yeah. like, even if you had nobody on your station, you always had a morning show yeah. because you had to have somebody driving the audience into the station, doing all the sales stuff, the promotion stuff, yeah. whatever. But some companies have been removing the morning shows from smaller to medium markets. Yeah. And it's just like one chick's on there doing a 45 second break a couple times in the three hour show. Radio and is a strange media. I don't know, A, how terrestrial even fucking exists. Well, here's the thing terrestrial commercials. No I'll drive the new for research 40 minutes just came and out. hear nothing but commercials on three yeah. different channels. And then when it comes back, it's the same song you yeah. just heard. Yeah. Hey. The new official research that just came out through uh, Edison and Nielsen. Yeah. Terrestrial radio is the most consumed media. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, 93%. It's like, why do, you, why right? do people listen to Five Finger Death Punch? It's Which like, because they look like Terrestrial Radio. It's insane. We got to figure out how to adapt and, and move along. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I knew a way, but I mean, I just... No, you're doing I, I, it. You're I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying. And, I, and that's why like, that's why I made the website, should, just to try and have like my own thing, because like, who the hell knows? Like, I know, I know how unforgiving of a business radio can be. Oh, yeah. So and you got to get your social media presence up. And that's what I'm really, and everything's really tie into at it. Sean the Butcher. <laughs> at S H A W N, <laughs> not S E A N. Sean the Butcher. And Sean the Butcher is a porn guy. Yeah. yeah I was <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm making it up. <laughs> but S H A W N. Yeah, that's yeah. porn the butcher. You're right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> S H A W N is the Sean that we're talking yeah, to. Yeah, man. You should check everything. Trying to get out. on. I post cool stuff. I try to not post a bunch of crap. There's not a lot of selfies. I know I'm not the most attractive person on the. I take a lot of concert photos, and when I meet cool people, I like to just 
rub it in people's faces. <laughs> Man, I did the same thing. <laughs> what else thing. am I going to do, you know? Before we get out of here, do, yeah. you do anything fun here at the con? Um, I mean, this is my first day here. I'm going to try and come back tomorrow to shop. I've mainly just been behind the, the desk the whole day. Uh, I got to run around as this artist, Jason Edmiston, who did a print. I love mint chocolate chip ice cream, and everybody hates it. And he loves mint chocolate chip ice cream. It's a friggin', it's a skull made of mint chocolate chip ice cream melting on a cone. And I was like, oh my god, where is this? Uh, I work in an ice cream shop. Yeah, and I make he's, ice cream he's all, all the day, way down so. on the on the <laughs> other end. I forget at five. He's one of the five hundred okay. is his booth. Uh, and I want to. Awesome. I have a, a uh, Mars Attacks print from him. It's like a small eight by eleven. But I, w I wanted him to have an 8x11 of the mint skull, but he's only got a gigantic poster and it's like $200. And I was like, man, that's all of my Comic Con money. So <laughs> yeah. I selfied with the friggin' poster, and that's gonna be me having that's it like other than Frame that no. yeah other than that i've just been eating edibles and walking around and hanging out behind the booth here's oh, what you my do hero. oh i got something for you oh, so you <laughs> go here's what you do you go over there with a card you talk a little bit you kind of smooth and say hey you know we'd like to interview sometime whatever and then sometimes they just give it to you yeah well i'm gonna be here tomorrow so i was thinking i was like so it's the last day i want to jack that down like maybe 75 bucks and i'll yeah. give you a solid yeah but so you'll plug like, them on yep. the radio yeah, just haggle yeah exactly <laughs> that's legal try no that's that's payola it's terrible <laughs> yeah, payola. i would never do that <laughs> no not i watch all. everyone else do it <laughs> nature of the game you're it is it game. is i'm very glad to see you guys Yo, yeah you guys so awesome cool. to see you, love seeing giggles at shows love seeing e rock do his goddamn thing on the i'm always watching you on social media very happy for you yeah i am a giant man child apparently to 90 percent of the audience well, i mean whatever we, we all that's why we're here at comic-con and i'm like 30 plus years old yes 35 whatever who cares all right give your plugs once again and then we're uh, gonna leave you at alone. showing the butcher hails from the crypt.com shout out to my boy vertebrae 33 check me out on liquid metal saturday and sunday six to midnight eastern and into the trivia pit every wednesday at 2 p.m eastern as well and I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Shout Sean, you guys. it's great seeing you, man. I'm well, glad you're you doing so well. Thank you. Glad to see you doing well as I well. I think you're somewhat happy. I see a smile. Uh, I can't this tell. Is my, this is most, as most as I can he's, smile. He's the metal guy. He's smiling a lot. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Giddles knows the deal. I know the deal. Yeah. This is my Dillinger escape plan smile right Yeah, now, right yeah. before your teeth get kicked <laughs> in. <laughs> Love you guys. It's Eric Nagel at New York Comic Con. New York Comic Con. Continuing on the floor here for It's Eric Nagel, uh, New York Comic Con 2018. We just saw Sean the Butcher, our yeah. old pal who used to work with me at uh, Opie and Anthony. He's still I over at Sirius XM. Butcher. What was he here looking for Godzilla stuff? Well, no, he was spinning at that uh, metal booth. Oh, nice. On the other side there. It's the guy who does like the mashup uh, sci fi characters with heavy metal bands. Yeah, Instead yeah. of Pig Destroyer, it's Porg Destroyer, and it's got a Porg on oh, it. Oh, is that like DJ Elliot or something it is? Uh, that guy? I forgot, I forgot the. I'll look it up here right. real quick. We just said it anyway, in the last yeah. segment. Rewind and go listen to that. My apologies. Matt, my listen apologies. to the show. I, I'll, it's on my list. Right after Doctor Who and Star Wars Resistance. Uh, well, we'll get into Doctor Who in a second, but uh, I want to talk about some of the interviews that we had scheduled, yes. but we lost okay. because of uh, publicists changing times all around to the point that it just wasn't convenient anymore, and then some of the things changing into press conferences Ugh. instead of interviews. Uh, Big Mouth on Netflix. Right. Yep. We went to the press conference. Uh, we tried to do some guerrilla tactics to get to them. It didn't entirely work, but the guys got their photos with everybody, so that's what was important. Uh, the new Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, right. which is the new story of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, starring the girl from Mad Men, the daughter. Nice, nice. Uh, John Hamm's daughter on the show. Uh, that got turned to a press conference. Same thing with American Gods on Stars, because I really wanted to talk to Ian yeah. McShane. Yeah, sure. That didn't happen. And, uh, oh, Dan Fogler. Oh, yeah. He, he was going to come down to the booth at one point. Yeah. And we were going to do it live on the floor. Then they said, well, maybe we should do it upstairs in the press room. Okay. Then it got turned into AMC wants to do it as a round table, which we don't do and can't do. Yeah. And then it got scheduled to this other stuff. It's just... Be a nightmare. It ha you can't blame the publicist for it, but it's just everything it changes so fast that sometimes like... Oh, well, we could do it at one now. It's like, but I got two other interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were supposed to do it at four. It's just the way the things go. So we lost out on a couple of things. And then, and it seems course, to have to like a bunch because the other people we talked to at the press rooms have had the same thing happen where they were yeah. looking for round tables and they get there and it's a press line. They're like, what do I, what do we do? Yeah. With what this? do we do? Yeah. So, yeah. So the, those bloggers don't do well on a press line yeah. where something for the radio, for television, for video clips like that don't do well in the round tables. Yeah. You can't air 
the other people's dumb questions and right. you know the idiot in the Ghostbusters suit is trying to talk sophistication yeah. and you're like you're wearing a Ghostbusters suit yeah. you're not a serious journalist yeah not that we are but you know come on we're halfway serious weed it out uh, I'm trying to think oh remember we ran into Sophie Turner yeah who is now uh, well she was Jean Grey in, in this sort of Continuity slash reboot yeah. of the X Men. You know her as uh, I forgot her her name. Well, but she's Stark. Jean Grey in the reboot. I mean, right, she's a yeah. Dark Phoenix. Yeah. She's uh, one of the Stark sisters in yeah. Game of Thrones. The redhead. Correct. I forgot the character's name. But we walked out of that one press area, and she was right in front of us. Platinum blonde hair, yeah. like a black gown and everything, and she was stunning. And we yeah. all walked out and we went, whoa. <laughs> like, she looked right at us and we all just went, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like, we could not have been more uncool. We used to see her in a giant fur coat, like, right, sitting yeah. in, like, jumping into a snow pile and running for her life. Right. Like, right. But she was nice. She said hi. We said hi. And then yeah. we quickly moved out of the way. And then, like, tailing her, which was weird, was our pal Ming Chen. Oh, nice. So we see Ming, uh, and I go, hey, Ming, he doesn't look, because Ming's a celebrity now, and yeah. I can't wait to tell Brian Johnson this. He turns sideways, stuck his hand out, and goes, hey, how you doing? Shakes Trevor's hand. And yep. keeps going. And ke keeps going, because Ming's a big deal. Right. And I just started laughing. I was like, I cannot wait to tell Brian about That's what hilarious. Ming did. And then we ran into him again. And he recognizes, comes over, hey, what's going on? He's, did, he was supposed to come by the booth. He yeah. had it on his phone. I don't know if he ever came down here or not. I don't think that he did. If he but, did, we weren't here. Yeah. But uh, shout out to Ming Chen for blowing us off. Yeah, Good to feel right. some of that celebrity status. Yeah, it, all, he, it always happens. He deserves it. Uh, we got more stories, but let's go back to another interview here. We got to go up and see Neil deGrasse Tyson yeah. for the new season of Cosmos. It's been a couple of years since the first season was on Fox. And Nat Geo. Now it's returning to Fox and Nat Geo. I think they said spring of 2019. I think so. Cosmos Possible Worlds. We get to talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson, which is always exciting. Hopefully I won't make an astrophysicist out of myself. Oh! Let's go up. Here in the press room for the brand new season of Cosmos Yay. Possible Worlds. Eric and Giddles, Big Kev's joining us for this one. Big as Kev. we say hello to, oh my God, they're doing power fists. You call him Big Kev, I gotta, you got a power fist to Big, yeah. big Kev. Anybody with Big as their, as their, as their moniker? For years. <laughs> We're here with yeah. the man, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sir, we have to deflect to you. You're the expert in all things times and space. What took so long for season two? Uh, so. Listen to me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's 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 hey. he's put he's intimidating me yeah, now. My hand is on your shoulder. <laughs> Let's make that acoustically real. Oh, oh man! <laughs> wow, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good that's one. no that's no uh, <laughs> Bill Nye slap. That was, that was a deep impact. Hey, I'm I'm up for what was your term? A degrass kicking? Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> a degrass whooping. Yeah, yeah whooping. <laughs> degrass whooping. Oh, you saw you saw the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, by the way, I'm I'm like. I can't tell you how many times I'm asked who would win a cage match, me or Bill Nye. And I have to remind people, I outweigh him by 100 pounds. Yeah. There's, this is not a contest. You got the reach, too. Oh, to no. I totally reach. And we, we've no, already... He, here's how... Here's when you want Bill Nye. If we're all on Gilligan's Island, you want him to be the professor. Of course. Because all I would do is point out the stars tonight. He'd actually we make the radio out of the, the coconut. coconut. Right, right. right. He, he, he'd succeed at that. But he couldn't fix a two-foot hole in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, we've already seen the simulation. Uh, if you've seen the epic rap battles of history video, yeah, 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 you yeah. show up at the end and you take out both Isaac Newton and Bill Nye. Yeah, I know, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, so, the here's the thing. The first Cosmos was 38 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second Cosmos was happened uh, 34 years after that. So this was four years. You are thinking that Cosmos is just, oh, another season every year, every year. Every Cosmos is like giving birth. You don't go up to a woman seconds after she gives birth and say, oh, when is the next baby coming? <laughs> you will get your ass kicked by that woman so bad. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just the wrong expectation. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Cosmos is a lot of invested emotional energy. If it were simply... I don't, I don't like shooting a television show. Yeah, yeah if it's just... Well, that's not simple. It's still a lot of creative work in there. But there's a lot of sort of digestive, educational content, illustrations. It takes a long time. Well, I was thinking not so much as a television season per season as when the first season ran its course, there was a lot of questions as if it was coming back at all. Oh, yeah, no, I, 
it did well for Fox and for National Geographic, so I don't think we doubted it. It was a matter of when we could all get the band back together and resurrect the energy necessary to make that happen. So it took a couple of years for us to sort of recover our energy and and to, and get everybody all the principles back. So we got everybody, you know, who uh, was a part of the first was, one. Almost everybody was enough so that it still has the, the right identity. Andrean, of course, is the soul of it. Uh, Carl Sagan's widow. She's the, she's the only person who's been continuous to all th three. So once, if you see what Cosmos is as an identity, it's traceable to her, almost entirely. Yeah. So moving into this new season, we're going to go into like Beyond Worlds here. I'm a big like sci-fi fan, like mm -hmm. old like Philip Dick, Isaac Asimov, like the old school stuff. What is like a, a mind-blowing fact of the universe that people might not know? And a second part of this question, which is kind of weird, but uh, as it feels like we're moving into a, a new Dark Ages, how do we get people interested in science again? So the we into Dark Ages would be a time and a place where science is rejected or not embraced in favor of fuzzy thinking or mystical thinking and the like. And when that happens, solutions to problems evap evaporate. Mm -hmm. So as best as I can tell, the we is the United States, not the world. Yeah. Right? The world is not sinking into the Dark Ages. It's the United States. And the rest of the world understands the role and value of science and technology in shaping their health, their wealth, and their security. So, so what will happen, I think, will fade more before we rise back up again. A democracy aligned is an extraordinarily potent thing. That's what we were at the beginning of the Second World War. So no one, no one's thinking party differences then. Everyone is thinking we have a common enemy or there's a need. Everyone comes together. And, and a democracy has huge resources where everybody's motivated. So I think we have to fall lower before we get higher mm -hmm. uh, based on the trend lines. But I still have hope. And you know what gives me hope? This sounds corny. But as, as much as, as Comic-Con people love fantasy, yeah. Essentially, everyone at Comic Con knows the difference between science fact and science fiction. Yeah, there's a science literacy that pervades, and Comic Con, as a movement, as a culture, as a demographic, has been growing. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people. And what started out as, you know, a couple thousand at a regional comic book conference, and this is I or church basement. <laughs> or basement. It is becoming a movement that I think, and we all program the computers that everybody else uses. We, yep. are the, we're, we have that tech uh, infra, um, base, uh, what's it? Um, foundation. Foundation. Infrastructure, yeah. it, 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 we are the I shouldn't be smarter than you, sir. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> you're, you're not. <laughs> Sunday. No, Sunday, no, morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> Sunday morning. No, no, so I think ultimately rational minds will prevail. And I don't know if I'm just being delusionally wishful thinking or, or not. I, I have a real quick funny yeah, one. Okay. I just want to know uh, what you feel. We'll judge whether it's funny or not. Okay, fair. Way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want to know uh, your thoughts on Pluto coming back uh, as a planet. Pluto's taking it back, I hear. Uh, uh, first, Pluto had it coming, first of all. <laughs> uh, I don't think the movement will succeed. No? Yeah, there's too, much, too many marks against it. The, there's an enthusiasm because the mission that went to Pluto is going to encounter an, uh, another object in the outer solar system. And so there's Pluto energy in the air, but after that passes by, I'm thinking that would fade again, and Pluto will, will reassume the mantle adjacent to the other planets. So we, we shouldn't get the hashtag going. You, you can't. Pluto taking it back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pluto I, now. I think Pluto got used to, Pluto's happier now, the way it is. <laughs> I think Pluto finally understood, because it has brethren. Yeah. Pluto was the puniest planet, now it's the king of the comets. So Pluto, Pluto is cool. Pluto's and you don't have to write any, like, I'm sorry notes to, like, third graders who wrote you <laughs> angry notes. Exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I've got the, the file cabinet drawer. Yeah. Sir, we are out of time. Okay. Uh, we're looking forward to Cosmos Possible Worlds coming out in the spring of 2019. That's when it is. It's, uh, it's on Nat Geo. It's a partnership with Fox. Mm -hmm. We're very excited for it. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Good. Thanks, guys. It's Eric Nagel at New York.
York Comic Con. New York Comic Con. Back at the Big Kev's Geek Stuff booth here on the floor of New York Comic Con 2018. It's uh, Eric, Matt, and Giddles. We just came from Cosmos. We're going to head up to the Tick in just a second. I know Freaks. Giddles is, uh, is excited to see uh, Peter Senefinowicz. Senefinowicz. Hell of a Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I enjoy, I'm a huge fan of the Tick. Uh, ben Enlin has always been so cool to us. Uh, Matt wasn't here last year yeah. when Ben came over to the booth. I know. While we were talking to Rob Paulson. Yeah. It yeah. was like a weird crossing of properties. <laughs> Uh, but we we got to talk to them out in San Diego. We did a couple years back, and they were all very cool, very nice. I'm a big Tick fan. Excited for season two. Not much is known other than Giddles tends to keep walking through the sets when he's going home, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you live in Brooklyn and, and not far right from where they've been filming everything. All they told us was springish, and that's good enough. It's like yep. we'll let we'll let you know when we're ready yeah, to that let works. you know. Yeah, right. All right, so let's go uh, over and talk to everybody from the tick. Very excited. One of my Very favorite excited. properties, the tick. And this is the third time where you have the opportunity to talk to somebody I really admire, Ben Edlin. We Hello talked again. to in San Diego. You walked by our booth last year in New York, and we just waved you over, and you came over and, and was like, hey, what's going on? What's yeah, you're like, I don't mind. I'll come yeah, hang. Come hang. <laughs> we had Rob Paulson there, too, so it was like a weird meeting of the right, world. Right, that's cool. So we're back here. Uh, everyone's really anticipating season two. Yep. We don't know a date. Is it at least done? Like, have everything uh, well, shot? Well, basically, everything's shot. Okay. Um, everything's cut, and now we're just putting the special effects and doing the sort of uh, sound mix and those kind of finishing details. So, yeah, we're on schedule. It's, uh, I think they were saying the, spring 2019. It's basically March is what okay. we're talking about. So okay. um, now it'll get, uh, we'll get a more specific date and then trumpet it. But that's the, that's the idea right now. Awesome. How, how glad were you to see the positive response by bringing the tick back after so long? Uh, the Fox property was great, but didn't, have, uh, didn't last that long. No. Now the re-imaging again for Amazon, that first half of the season was gangbuster. Cool, thank you. Um, no, it was uh, really great to have people accept it because that was definitely introducing a new organ to the body, like uh, it could have been rejected, yeah. you know. Uh, so those were concerns, but I think it worked in part because my primary goal was to just make its own thing and try to make a new, not, not get worried too much about any one person's considerations and just make what the story said it wanted it to be at this right. time. And uh, it feels like, uh, I mean, we're just blessed with a great cast, blessed with like a lot of support from Amazon and Sony that are able to do something we weren't able to quite pull off in the previous live action. Yeah, and the tick is such a big world too. Yeah. That, like, you, there's so much story you can tell, and it, it's that's what's really great about it. And the characters and the villains and everyone mm -hmm. is just so unique cool. that you don't find in a lot of other you know comic book properties. And that's the thing, great. the cool thing is like I live in Williamsburg in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, so I see you guys shooting all the time. <laughs> and there was one day I woke up in a drunken stupor, and there was a spaceship in the middle of McCarran Park, and I was like, what happened last you night? You saw the crash. <laughs> yeah, I saw <laughs> the crash. Awesome. And it was awesome. That and then they were great. like, get out of the shot, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you crashed a ship yeah. in my neighborhood. So, I was like, oh, was I Rick last night? What happened? But it was really cool. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't hear that. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm like, and thank you for your patience. Oh yeah. Because we were all over like uh, Queens and Brooklyn yeah. and, and Manhattan to some degree, uh, but that was one of the most fun moments we had. I felt was bringing a big piece of set out into the real world, a spaceship. It made the crew excited. It made yeah. everybody excited. To it was just, awesome. Because not a lot of stuff's practically done anymore, so that was really cool. Yeah. With the success of season one, now you know, as you were saying, you're getting ready to uh, finish wrapping up production for season two. Was there more freedom this time around to go a little crazier, go a little weirder, a little wider with what you could do? It's like, okay, we established the show. Uh, we took have, took care of everything that was important. It was successful. We have season two. Now we can have some fun. We have a bit more breathing room to add totally. more stuff in. Absolutely. Like and that's exactly how it felt. Like the first season was very much a, a binary story between Arthur, the Tick, and the Terror, and everyone that fell into that story. Mm -hmm. And this one is more like, more like in the the real sort of we're up and running now. It's not that there's one big bad, it's that there's just a lot of shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the bureaucracy and real life mundanity, but also world building. So we bring uh, our version of 
you know, essentially our version of an, a very popular governmental agency known well in comics. Yeah. Uh, but like our version uh, comes in and gets to be a really big part of this season, um, and that's been a lot of fun because we really got to build Aegis, which is our homeland security for superheroes kind yeah. of place. And that was exciting. We brought new supervillains, new new heroes come in. Um, yeah, we got to do, I think, more of the stuff that's idiosyncratic and sort of individually weird sort of moments of inspiration because we got our storytelling, that first laying down of the law out of the way. So have you been uh, receiving requests from people that maybe are fans of the property and said, Hey, you know, I'm an actor, I'm a comedian, I'm something I kind of like would like to do a role on the show. <laughs> more more it's become more easy and I mean like we we do have um, basically like we're we're really uh, we always are fighting to make the world as sort of give it as much scope as possible which means we actually have almost never enough money for anything <laughs> and we're really like begging a yeah. lot of the way so like when you ever notice their their scenery for the horizon is just graffiti in brooklyn <laughs> it's just brick walls it's just yeah. one guy moving with the background over and over like we've a got cartoon. one flat yeah. move the flat yeah. Uh, yeah i mean it is like uh you're just always because you want to go over that next mountain and you want to do this cool thing and you know we've got a lot of interesting things going down so when it came to having a guest cast we really depended on goodwill and, and um, really like people loving the the project and yeah that worked out no I was gonna say uh, like I think the the coolest thing is like the the tick outfit and like how articulated you got everything like and using practical effects like was that hard to design that and get that made yes. or like yeah that's really uh, uh, if you haven't talked to Peter yet, he'll tell you more, um, but like uh, it is uh, technically, it was like, I didn't realize the degree to which we were making basically the creature from the Black Lagoon, yeah. <laughs> but a funny version where the guy could go to the bathroom hopefully in between cuts, <laughs> right, like technically speaking, engineering wise, this was an extremely challenging adventure, and you know, the new season has a new tick suit and the new tick suit is so much better so much more is uh, that explained or is it one of those classic tick things where there's just something new and everybody seems to know why it's there but no, the audience doesn't we <laughs> explain it and don't explain it at all well, that's perfect. what I'm looking so for it's exactly right like exactly that okay and it's much more disturbing that we explain it like, we explain it much worse than just like looking away <laughs> it's far worse uh, I think well we're <laughs> um, it's but it's fun. So yeah, that's really fun. And that's, I think, also though, like, well, the Ticks always had this weird obsession with continuity. So, yeah. like, uh, in the cartoon, it was the moon with chair faces, chair face chip and you know, yep. vandalism on it. And here, like, we will not let go the fact that the costume changes. That's happening. So it's happening. Okay. I don't know why. We could also ignore it, but we refuse to. That's awesome. Well, I, um, I can't wait. Uh, last question before you go. Merchandising. Um, for the first run of the tick, I mean, I know Funko had the pop for the tick. Yeah. Uh, didn't see too much more than that. Can we see more stuff coming out for season two? I would like it. I mean, uh, we've got some cool uh, uh, costumes, I understand, for Ruby, Ruby's costumes. Okay. They're on the floor now. But uh, yeah, we didn't see a tremendous amount. What we desperately want, I think, is an Arthur Funko pop. Yes. Just to round out that. Maybe some cool shirts, uh, too. Um, uh, yeah, well, absolutely. That would be good, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, if anybody can make it happen, you seem to be the guy to talk to. So. It's, uh, I am, I could do more. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the whole premise of the show, the tick. We could do more. Could do more. Question mark. The but it's not never answered. arrives. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, we're out of time. Ben Edlin, thank you for being so cool to yeah, us over always. the years. Yes, thank, thank you for coming you. talking. Thank and, you for uh, paying attention. Can't wait for season two. Yeah, we really awesome. appreciate it. Pleasure. Hey, hi. Hello, How's it going? Sir. How are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Eric. I'm Brian. Hi, Eric. <laughs> I'm Brian, Eric. Yes. Hi. That's oh. a cool shirt. Thanks. Uh, it's Michael Kupperman. Do you know him? I do not. He, uh, he's got this comic, Tails, designed to Thrizzle. Snake and Bacon was his old comic. He's, he's like a, an unsung genius that needs to be sung more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sing his praises into the microphone there. Yeah, Michael Kupperman, yeah. Yes. It looks it looks like a screenshot from uh, like that Mitchell and Webb look, like, you know, like a sketch comedy show. Like. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess like I like it because it's sort of... 
I, I think about this often. This this panel. It's 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 like from a from a comic that was was made up of like fake uh, covers, comic book covers, you know. And um, I love this, this was my favorite because it, it sums up like how like when like I don't know if you write like creatively like when I write sometimes like I think that is a that is a great idea and then like ideas are kind of worth nothing unless you 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 work on them or you 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 have to develop them but like anyone can have an idea right. you know? that's why I love the waiting for adventure yeah. <laughs> and like, all right what do we do you know Peter Sarfenowitz uh which or wits? I heard you correcting somebody down the line. I'm which? Which? You do pronounce it which? Yeah. Okay. D I, I um, in the car on the way here, we were we were running late, and the driver rang the entrance of Comic Con. Said, "I, I have Peter Servino, right? He, you know, it's like I don't get, I don't care about my name at all, right? <laughs> yeah. like I go crazy if as I long do. as you get the pizza. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what Siri calls me. <laughs> okay, pizza. <laughs> I'll check that for you. <laughs> and so, um, uh, so he said, "Yeah, I have Peter Servino." Uh, and she said, "Peter Servino." She's on the speakerphone, and I, from the back seat, said, "It's Serafinowicz." He said, "Oh, Serafinowicz." And then there was a pause, and then the lady said, "Okay, I got it. Sabrina, the teenage witch." <laughs> Seriously. And like I've heard many variations of my name, but that was the first. <laughs> uh, let, let, let's dive into season two, and then I know uh, Gil's had a question for you. Uh, we just spoke with Ben Enlin. Yeah. He's told us to talk to you or ask you about the suit for season two. Oh yeah. He said okay. uh, there's some changes. They explain some things. They don't explain other things. But he said you could give us more detail about what's new with the suit for season two. Um, well, I don't know. It's. It, 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 um, it, I don't know, it crippled my body in a different way. <laughs> but, um, it, uh, it looks great. This suit looks, looks really cool. It's, um, it, 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 it's, uh, it was designed by this, this, this guy, uh, Jose Fernandez, who's like his company, Iron Head. Oh my God, they make like, they, they made like the Bat Batman's, Ben Affleck's Batman suit, which I right. tried on, right? Was that cool? No, yeah, it was pretty cool. Did it fit, was it a little snug? Or, well, he, I feel like you're I, a little taller than yeah, Affleck. Yeah, you're a tall guy, how does that he, work? He's actually, I think we're the same height. Really? Yeah, I think so. I've never met him, but um, I, uh, yeah, it was, it was cool trying that. Like it's on display as you walk in. I, I, and also like the Daft Punk helmets. Oh like, yeah, so cool. uh, Like any cool thing you can think of, he's done this. You know, so he designed this thing. It looks looks way more like realistic. It doesn't it doesn't have like the exoskeletal bits on it. It's like it, 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 the the muscles kind of. Um, you're gonna move uh, constructed in a way that when I move my arms the muscles move in a similar way to like how your actual muscles move right cool. so it's sort of lo it looks it looks great you know it looks it looks a lot of function better for you yeah it's I mean it's still you know it's like a common problem for people who play superheroes I'm thinking of starting like a support group right? <laughs> but like uh, it's you, you know ultimately there are only so many improvements that you can do right you're, you're in a suit well, Unless, the most important improvement can you go to the bathroom easier uh, no no <laughs> right. uh, but um, but I can I can kind of jump around and stuff I can move my head which I couldn't do uh, in the, in the yeah. previous yeah you always had to do that stiff turn yeah stiff turn <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was. Uh, I'm, I'm just a big fan of yours through Thanks, like through man. Space and Black Books nice. and like Shaun of the Dead and and John Wick. Like so. Oh, are wow, you, okay. Are you gonna be in John Wick three by any chance? Uh, well, I don't know because I hope so. Yeah. I, I, I haven't been approached, as they say. Um, which I always find is a weird way of. It's like somebody approaching you. Yeah. You know I mean, it's kind of. Like, I got this action movie. Yeah. You got guns. Like I do. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I loved doing that. That was that was like, uh, I, I got this call saying uh, from my agent saying, "Can you, can you be in Rome tomorrow night to do a scene with Keanu Reeves in the new John Wick movie?" I was like, 
Y- 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 yes. <laughs> um, and I felt it made me feel like I was a spy or something. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. drop everything. You've got to go and, you know. And it was, he was amazing. How great would it have been if Peter just said, could you move it to Monday? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of doing something tomorrow. Well, it was interesting because I didn't know you were in the movie. And then as soon as I saw you, uh, me and my friends were like, it's Dwayne Benzie. <laughs> Dwayne Benzie is <laughs> John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> It's so yeah, good. no. I, so I'd love to be. Uh, I uh, I haven't been. Yeah, I haven't been asked yet. But um, you know, yeah, we'll see. I guess. So what can what can we expect out of season two with the tech? Uh, it's it's just it's really cool. It's like it's, it's, kind of, it's like knows what it is a bit more. You know, it's like it's not as frenetic. It's not like it doesn't have that that. Or it doesn't start. It starts off with like okay, we've killed. Oh, we've got rid of the terror, and now it's like we're being we're doing the day-to-day job of being superheroes and dealing with life. And like, you know, the tick is—he's at his best when there's like a crisis or a big battle or a, you know, got to save some people from, you know, from a plane crashing or a bo- you know whatever. But like, he's got to deal with. The, the normal everyday stuff which is harder to do you know it's as hard and harder to do those you know? are the some of the best properties of of being the tick is the day to day stuff but also when the tick is bored yeah. he annoys everybody oh, yeah. so where annoying, everybody else yeah. was like I've been working all week I want a weekend where I'm doing nothing but the second so- everything stops the tick is just driving everyone crazy and then it becomes even more funnier yeah uh, I mean yeah he is He'd be a really good friend. Yeah, no. like, uh, I see him as like I, I, I'd like him as a friend, but he would really annoy me as well sometimes. Yeah. You know, he's, uh, he's and uh, there, there are moments where he's a bit like a dog as well, like a big dog, which I liked. I, I like playing. Those, those. <laughs> um, and you know, I love that he just lo- he, he's got that like what a dog. Has its unconditional love for its owner. You, you know, can do no wrong in their eyes. And it's that's that, that's how he feels about Arthur. You know, it's just you're blowing my mind because I never thought to think of the tick as a dog. Yeah. But it makes so much more sense yeah. with his mentality. It's like that dog's just happy to be wherever he is. Oh yeah. As long as you're it. throwing the ball, that's all he wants. When I read the pilot script, it was like the, the thing that really got me was like all he wanted was Arthur to be his friend. Yeah. And you know. Like I've got two kids and they're in school and like you know friendships and and this kid doesn't like me and these are being mean to me and it's like I remember that myself and it's mm-hmm. like and it it doesn't just stop in school you know it's but like for you know so that was the that was the, the big thing for me was this sort of it's like a love story like a love story please oh I just love you please let let me love you you know <laughs> just love me back <laughs> yeah love me back yeah. <laughs> Peter thank you so much for your time awesome. enjoy you. the rest of the New York Comic Con thank you very and we can't much. wait for season two thanks thanks I hope you'll really enjoy it I, I can't, I've seen I can't a few wait. episodes in it and I think it's great Continuing on with Press for the Tick here yeah. at New York Comic Con, we're finally getting a chance to talk to Griffin Newman. We missed you out in uh, San Diego yes, for the yes. premiere. I got everybody else, but you had to run off and do something. So okay. the world. I don't know what it was. This was last summer you're talking about? Uh, right, right before the premiere. Okay. So 2017? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, now we get a chance to talk to you. Yes. Here you are, and I have nothing to ask. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that, uh, there's so many things to talk to you about, but first off, who and what is on your shoes? It's Vin Diesel. Told That's you. what we thought. Okay. It's Vin Diesel. He's my spirit animal. So it's sort of like a wolf moon painting, but with Vin Diesel and a wolf. I didn't know if yeah. there were Diesel shoes with a Vin Diesel, like a Vin Diesel yeah. Diesel. They're like not. They're not. Thing. It's a, a Brandon Bird, who's like a great artist, who okay. does a lot of pop culture work, uh, uh, sells these on his site. Big plug for him. He's really good. That's awesome. Yeah. They're really cool. Because <laughs> we're, we're seeing you move down the line. We're like, I can't tell. And then as you got closer, yeah. Brian goes... I think that's Vin Diesel. Oh, it definitely shoes. is. Yeah. It definitely is. I'm I'm a big like WWVD guy. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, what would Vin do? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's awesome. sort of my gu- guiding principle in life, you know. Well, uh, this you're at home here at Comic Con, right? You're yeah. into all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Have you gone to cons in a non-professional oh, capacity? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For, uh, I mean, I, I remember skipping the big like uh, end of school year eighth grade party. 
uh, when I'm sure everyone was going to make out and have half a beer for the first time, yeah. right. to uh, get in a car with my friend and drive up to uh, Wizard World Philadelphia. <laughs> I was like, this is like my victory lap for the end of a school year. Where are the cool kids now? Yeah. No, I've, I've been going to cons my whole life. It's very bizarre to be on the other side of these things that I've like, I, I know so well and that I've right. sort of studied so much. You uh, are you walking the floor? Have you been recognized at all? Or? You know, I, I am... Uh, I, I, I walked the floor yesterday and on Friday, and I think everyone around me always says, like, you can't do it, you're going to be mobbed. And I think they uh, don't count on how much I do not carry myself like someone <laughs> who uh, should be recognized. Yeah. I have such slumpy posture, and I keep my head down, and I walk fast. And it's not a defensive, like, precautionary measure thing. It's how I walk that I genuinely uh, go unnoticed most of the time. Occasionally, I'll lock eyes with someone, and then they'll come up, and I'll I'll sort of try to keep. Is to walk around yeah. with the helmet and like secretly put yeah. it for a second, and then take it off. Right, like, right. Uh, I have the I costume in my bag in case I have to use it. But yeah. so far, I've been pretty good. Yeah. There's people on the floor are like, is that Griffin Newman? No, man. Look how miserable that right. guy That's is. That's honestly what it is. Griffin Newman would take better care of himself He'd be than so that. He's so happy. He's on the yeah. tick. Right. He's got yeah. the cartoon. Yeah. He looks show. so worn out. Yeah. 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 So I, tired. I think he just looks like the so guy. So stressed. I think that's. I genuinely, I went to a. I was at a bakery again, like a cup of coffee. And the guy said, hey, have you seen uh, the new version of The Tick? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, so you, you probably get that a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he thought there was no chance I was actually the guy. And just kept on asking me questions like, so do you get stopped a lot and people think you're him? And like, that is awesome. I had to eventually say like, I am the guy. How great would it be if he was just making small talk, like he was going to recommend the show to you to watch? I thought he was being an asshole and like <laughs> making the joke of like, I'm pretending this is random small talk, wink, yeah. wink. Wink, wink. Right, and it turned out that he was just like, well, you look a lot like the guy, but there's no way the guy would look this bad in real life, <laughs> you know? Well, let's talk about when you're not looking bad. Sure. And that's as Arthur on The Tick. Uh -huh. uh, going into season two, we talked to Ben, we talked to Peter, uh, we talked a lot about The Tick's new suit. Mm -hmm. Is there any adjustments to the Arthur suit for season two? Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are, are uh, practical things. I mean, the, the visual differences, I think, will be pretty subtle because um, we didn't try to reinvent the wheel. I mean, The Tick, it, it's an in story point right that he is sort of evolving or devolving mm -hmm. or molting in one direction molting, he's changing right. form <laughs> you know and uh ostensibly my costume stays the same but uh you know after season one we learned a lot about what makes it hard to act and what looks weird on camera and all right. these things so i have my laundry list of notes and a lot of them are internal you know they're yeah. they're how it feels on my body more than how it looks on the outside but hopefully translates to a better performance well, so i can imagine like some pieces being clunkier if you have to run you're like oh this doesn't yeah work at all. right so like, you start to learn like where can we lose padding when can yeah. we gain padding how do we make the eyes line up a little more with yeah. my goggles <laughs> can you i know? maybe request like reflective strips at night so cars aren't going to hit sure me? sure you know? things like that <laughs> yeah on the windshield yeah <laughs> uh speaking of season two what can you tell us from the arthur uh uh, uh, point of view for season two. What's happening with Arthur? What's happening with Dot? I, I mean, I think it's us trying to move into this world of being legitimate heroes now, you know? I mean, we were a kind of um, uh, not wannabes, but we were on the outskirts just doing our best, and now we've sort of become somewhat legitimate. You're kind of a big deal in the city now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which means that we're, you know, uh, we've caught the eye of uh, all the groups and the other superheroes who are coming out of retirement. And so Arthur and The Tick, you know, um, when, when our show started, it's in a world where superheroes have kind of been outlawed and living on the fringes and not really at large. Right. Arthur as a kid grew up idolizing them but now they're sort of these outlaw vigilantes. And partially because of them beating the terror, getting good press and all these things, the superheroes start to come out of the shadows and the shield-like organizations start yeah. up again. And now Arthur and the Tick have to deal with the bureaucracy of a real industry, you know? <laughs> they don't gain the power of being the only superheroes out there anymore. Now we have to compete with people who are a lot yeah. more experienced. Sorry, we can't put you on this. We have this guy on. It's like, right. oh, but I triple stamped it. Exactly. I have the affidavit. Like, I should be able you to joke. do this. There's a lot of paperwork this season. <laughs> it's a you. lot about that. I'll tell yeah. you what it is. They've gone corporate. Yes. <laughs> That's what's happening. We're trying to figure out if we can exist in a corporate world. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you got to wrap? Yeah. All right. It's not worth the paperwork. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, well, we're running out of time here, Griffin. Thank you so much for thank you so the time. much. I got to come on the show sometime. Please too. do. Yeah. We're in I Jersey. We're in New York. Yes, I'm, I'm here in the city. In, just yeah. do it. No, no, I'd love to come in the studio. Please cool. do. Yes. All right, we'll see you next time. Fantastic. Because we got to still talk about merch at one point. Oh, and well, the lack of Arthur. Very Brothers. long conversation about. Yeah. This. We'll get to that. Yeah. Thank cool. you. at New York Comic Con. Back on the floor of New York Comic Con at the Big Kev's Geek Stuff booth. It's Matt, it's Giddles, it's me. Hello. And uh, we just did the tick, which was a lot of fun. Giddles was kicking himself as we were leaving, not realizing that Peter was Darth Maul in the Star Wars movies. I had no idea. And then tell him, tell uh, everybody who his brother-in-law is. It's Graham Linehan, who is the creator of Black Books and IT Crowd. Some and of our favorite Ned, like, shows. Some yeah. of our favorite British shows. And I'm up there, I'm like, I'm a big fan of Black Books. And he's like, uh-huh. Like, I had no idea. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Ugh. So I got to check the prep sheets. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go up to the cast of Cobra Kai in just a moment here. You're the best uh, around. Are you going to come though? Come with that or no? Uh, bro, I, I have no voice. Yeah, you're, I, you I, sound I would like just you're sound like there. a cream puff. Oh. Giddles is run down. I'm run down. You're run down. You can tell it's getting close to the end of the second show. Yes, sir. When the caring level is almost on the floor. I have no <laughs> cares left to give. There's a lot more Matt people here. Matt just wants here. to crane kick this convention right I out of do. here. I do. There's a lot more people here than I normally see on a Sunday. Yeah, it's it's super busy. It's it's packed, man. It's oh, packed. that's right. It's a uh, day off tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. So usually Sunday, the last day of a con um, for New York or for San Diego, the last day of the con is usually just families and kids that come in because all the panels are pretty much done. Right. All the celebrity stuff is pretty yeah, much Sunday's done. Sunday's normally a little bit quiet. This is a chance just to explore the floor, see the booths, do some shopping, meet new artists, uh, new product developers. Not this year. No. No. Nope. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I, I just honestly, I think, I think Sundays are just becoming any other con day. I think yeah. Sunday tickets are the last ones to sell out normally. So I think a lot of people scoop them up, and this is the only day they come, and so they come and they stay all day. Right. And the con is just packed. Look, I mean, it's good for the vendors. I hope everybody had a good show, but man, the floors are jammed. It is like way more crowded than it has been the last Ever. couple of years on a Sunday. Like yeah. I was walking through, and I'm like, this should not be. Like this is a Saturday crowd. This Easily. is a Friday afternoon crowd. This is not a Sunday this crowd. This is not a but Sunday it crowd. Is, maybe this is the new Sunday crowd. I mean, it's also unseasonably warm to be like 83 degrees yeah. in New York today, which is probably you know. I remember dude. in years past, I would wear jeans to this convention because yeah. it was chilly already. So, uh, so well, I've been wearing jeans to this convention and been sweating my ass off just walking four blocks to the train. Yeah. Well, I, I apologize <laughs> for your loss. No, I, I'm a little sick and tired of the fact that it's October and we're dealing with 80 degree weather and it's humid. Now, I, for other areas of the country or the world, yeah. wherever you're listening, you might be saying, I would kill for that kind of weather in October. Or you might say, it's like that where I live in this part of the world all right. year long. Uh, for this area, we're in what they call the temperate climate. Right. And we should be going into fall, cooler weather. Apple cider, apple cider donuts, all the Halloween stuff. wearing like warm hoodies, yeah. and, you know, to hide our fat. Well, look, Halloween is technically still three weeks away. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, well, forget it. No, no. What were you no, saying? No, it is a couple of weeks away, but it's like it's hard to get no. into the mood. No, you're I remember, right. like, going back to school, like the end of September would start getting chilly. Oh, like, yeah. oh you get into that mood. It's like it's fall, and now yeah. it's like it's hot. It's hot. I like, you know, I want to go in the pool. Like I don't well, want to. <laughs> but the only thing I will say about our era is, though, even that it is, even though it is warm right now, it could change on a dime. Oh yeah. Literally, like Tuesday, it could be thirty. And we'd be like, well, I guess it's 30. Yeah. Like, that's it. I can't wait for that because then I flip the air conditioning off and I open all the windows. There you yeah, go. Man. I love sleeping in the cold. I, have, I already have the air conditioners off. I'm already doing windows open. But yeah, it's Really? Crazy. In this yeah. humidity? Yeah, it's not that bad at night. It's really bad during the day, but at night's been pretty nice. Oh, it's not I, I have to leave my AC on because I live on the first floor now, so I can't really, I don't want to leave my windows open because I don't have like the bars right. and stuff, and I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't want people to be like, hey, neighbor, how's it going? Like, please get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I think you also have to worry about somebody when they're not looking, kicking in your air conditioning and getting That it. is the, exactly what I was thinking, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. We're not live. So people aren't like, oh, hey, Giddles, this isn't home. Let's go loot his stuff. Yeah, please don't take my stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go up. Where are we going? Oh, we're going up to see the guys from Cobra Kai. Did you finish it, Matt? I did. I loved Cobra Kai. Giddles, you finished the whole thing, too? Uh, I have not yet. I loved it. I'm glad they're bringing a season two starting Heck next yeah. year. And... Uh, it's one of those properties you think it might have just been a one and done, like a nostalgia 
uh, reboot no, just man. for the sake of Story doing it, solid. but it, it got its own, like this generation, this younger generation, latched onto it and became its whole uh, uh, its own thing. So now it's bringing in the older Karate Kid fan base with the younger generation, the YouTube generation that loves the show on YouTube, and now everybody's happy, yeah, and man. they're going to keep making many more episodes. Absolutely. All right, let's go see Cobra Kai. We'll be right back. All right, cool. we'll be right back. Here at the press line for Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah. New York yeah. Comic Con 2018, Eric and Giddles. I'm talking to Ralph Macchio, fellow Long Islander at, yes, at one sir. point. You grew up in Deer Park. Uh, close. Dix Hills. Dix Hills. Right okay. There, right there. Right. I've spent a lot of time on that Deer Park Avenue. Oh, yeah. Why we're, did we we're trust Iceland people? Yeah. yeah. Why did we trust Wikipedia for, yeah. for that information? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because I've always uh, deferred them one town over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you guys put the, the YouTube premium service on the map. They've been trying for a while. They were doing unique and original movies and other projects, but it really took the return of the Karate Kid franchise to blow the doors open for the, for their service and everybody ran to get it, to watch it and it didn't feel cheap, it didn't feel um, like it discredited the original franchise, it was an, a natural extension of what the movies were supposed to be, you guys nailed it Well, uh, listen, thank you, I think that um, I think the low expectations of YouTube Premium and people were like what, not Netflix, not HBO not Amazon, didn't didn't hurt us yeah. because everyone's going to say this is never going to work and then the fact that these three writers John, Josh and Hayden had this vision are we're writing the show for by the fans for the fans Right. Um, it wasn't just a studio saying okay how could we do a quick cash grab on a concept yeah. which is seen too often they uh, take painstakingly go through every detail to make sure they're not pushing too far this way not pulling too far that way and, uh, and a little bit of maybe you believe otherworldly I don't know who it but the, you know anytime something works this well he, I believe that the, it's uh, kind of meant to be timing is right uh, maybe a year earlier or a year later it wouldn't be the time wouldn't have been it just what it was is right and the 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 references the throwbacks the Easter eggs weren't forced they weren't uh, like a, a bit out of a place everything fit especially you know with, with, with William Zabka's car it's like yeah. he never grew out of that That's so right. it wasn't a throwback that he had the same he bought the old car right. he still had the same no, car he great. just lived through he that. was lost in the 80s yep. and that's in he's yeah, and even in his politics and his his yeah you know you, what, you, you, he didn't grow out you of don't that. need you don't need an inhaler it's in your head and it was a really like gritty like kind of reboot too yeah i feel like because i grew up on karate kid it was my yeah. favorite movie my parents like hated having to constantly rent it because i would run around the house doing right, the right. Yeah. And, so when, and so when this was reimagined it was like wow this is like a cool like grittier take on it and like goes a little more in depth into the characters it, which was it great was, it was a, a a, a, a fine line of marrying the nostalgia with what's relevant for today. They did a brilliant job with that. And on top of that, it just, um, you know, you had to lift the edge a little bit, you know, so it's not necessarily for your five and six year olds by any stretch, but it was like they had to make a choice. Yeah. And I think they thread the needle quite well to um, to have all the feels and the nostalgia and the little goosebumps and tear in your eye and then laugh out loud comedy that's relevant and dealing with bullying today. Oh yeah. And how the, what the differences are with technology and everything else. I think it was very exciting that everybody was on board to have <laughs> you all come back and be a part of this because the the first three movies in the 80s you, you never really know is like did it run its course where the actors like we we did all we could with this I'm ready to move on with my life to other things I just don't want to be known for that right. or sometimes they want a franchise to keep going and it just doesn't for whatever reason but the you know enough time has passed where you come back and it doesn't feel forced right. it doesn't feel like there it's a cash grab it doesn't feel anything negative it's like wow they really took the time to figure out where they are at this point in time and, and give it a natural feel to everything. Yeah, and, the, and the, the, the platform lends itself to that, where 10 years ago you didn't have the YouTube premiums or Netflixes or these places where you would essentially take a five-hour movie and cut it up into 10 half-hour yeah, parts. Great. So it isn't just plot-driven like... You know, 15 years ago, this would have to be another major motion picture, which would be plot driven. You wouldn't delve into the characters. Karate Kid was very black and white, good over evil. Cobra Kai, there's gray areas, there's moral ambiguity. They both make mistakes, and even the kids make mistakes. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it services the long haul, we hope. Uh, last thing before you go, uh, do you like how they 
took your character and Johnny where they blurred the lines where you're both bo good and bad guys at I the think same so. time, I mean, depending on the situation? That's what I was alluding to, which will hopefully go for a long period yeah. of time. We all have pros and cons. Right. Um, you know, certainly on the upfront, they painted LaRusso to be a little bit of a, a more of a prick than Johnny yeah. Lawrence. <laughs> but because they were trying to build sympathy for Johnny Lawrence. And then it sort of shifts. And in season two, you'll see even more of that. Uh, they're both guys that you would imagine if they just stopped and listened, realized maybe they're not so different as episode nine showed a little bit of. Right. Ralph, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Great we're to looking be here. forward. When is season two? Season two sometime in the spring. We don't have a date, but uh, we're shooting it right now. We just got started. All right. Awesome. Can't wait. Thank okay. you so much, man. Thank you. How's it going? Hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Brian and Eric, what's happening? How's it going, man? Who are we introducing today? <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on with uh, Cobra Kai here at New York Comic Con 2018, we talked to Ralph. We got to talk to William Zapka. Oh, yeah. It's the yin and yang of the Karate Kid. That's right. You need Closer. to talk to the good guy. You can't exactly. Just talk, you can't just talk to the villains. This is See? what we were talking about. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. love that the current series blurs the lines. It's almost like wrestling. The good guys can be the bad guys, and the bad guys can be the good guys. You kind of got the Stone Cold Steve Austin kind of mm. aura going with you right now, where like. You're introduced, you're like, oh, there's Johnny, he was the bad guy, because the 80s were so clear-cut with the line of who was good and who was bad. Right. And then you're starting to see redeeming qualities or that there's really a good person in Johnny. He's just trapped in the times that he grew up in. And he's starting to learn as he's going about technology, about the way kids think. Now, it's like you're learning dad lessons without being a kid, right, uh, having right. a kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's epic to do that. I mean, I think there's a real big part of me that's, misses those days mm -hmm. I mean I'm not, I'm like kind of yeah I'm like you know a little bit uh, you know this new social media all the everything in your face all this stuff it's computer. too much I like old day stuff man I like popping the old cassette in the in the radio in the car and cruising and you know and not you know so there's there's something hitting, fun about hitting the preset radio again. where it would go to yeah, there yeah. and you'd see the d dial physically yeah. move yeah. and hear them yeah yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i miss pulling the, the, the cassette out and having to wind it up with a pencil or putting you a, some of you guys putting never a kodak, know what i'm talking about yeah. putting a kodak film cap under the tape to get to get it to play <laughs> yeah yep. exactly yeah stick it in on anything <laughs> and if you want your rewind didn't work you had to fast forward and then flip the tape over and put it back in yeah like, man yeah. <laughs> and a phone like a phone at your house that you know if you were there to get it a great if not i don't know how we met anywhere in the old days you i know, know I mean? the old days now <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean though like you just knew how to get to florida you didn't have maps yeah but like yeah. how do we all meet at a party or something like there was no like hey i'm five minutes away you know what i mean like yeah it was just you know, gonna be and there then liking that and oh here's my pin like how did we even meet anywhere you know like if you weren't there to get a phone call you know well you're Bubble back trust. we get so to see it, more yeah. of your character yeah. because look let's face it it was a weird turn for the second movie where like all right let's see what happens after the tournament with johnny he just goes to Japan and is like, all right, we're just going to leave that behind. Right. At that point, you didn't know there was a third one coming. Right. And then finally the third comes and they're like, okay, we're going to go back to that, but with other guys. And then we'll introduce Johnny again later at the end. It yeah. was like, yeah. you got screwed out of two movies. Yeah, man, I got <laughs> choked out and that was it. Yeah. Choked out and dropped on the floor, man, at, at the opening of Karate Kid 2. Yeah. Which is fine with me because it's given, I mean, in hindsight, you know, I didn't really crave being in the in the, in the the remakes and uh, the sequels going forward. I didn't feel left out. Um, but it's given 30 well, That's how the years audience now. felt. Well, you know, I mean, it, uh, it, there was something special about the first one. It was organic, you know. I think the second one was good, too. And But then it became, kind of, I don't know, a little bit of a formula. And we mm -hmm. knew it was going to happen. There was no expectations. Karate Kid 1, you didn't know what was going to happen. You know he's going to pull out this kick. You didn't have, you, you didn't anticipate it, you know. Right. Now you know that, you, well, I know what this is going to end like. Every movie, you know it's going to end somehow. Which, how are they going to serve it up? Well, I think so. I think the difference is like in the uh, in movies now. It's like when they set something up, you're like, that's going to come back later. In that movie, when he's doing the crane kick, like you you forget about it because yeah. you get so intense in that fight. And when he pulls right. out, you're like, oh shit, the crane yeah. kick! Yeah. And then yeah. he does the it. It's the finishing move. Is epic. Yeah. 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 And then it just it's it's done. It's yeah. so good. We're running out of time with you, but oh, how man. great? No, how great does it feel that this seemed like it was taking a chance by putting it on YouTube Premium? It wasn't Netflix. Wasn't Hulu. Wasn't these bigger properties. But it now you guys are the bar for that service who had other unique original properties and they weren't quite catching on. This just blew up all over the place. And there's so much love, not just from the generation that grew up with the credit kit, but even the younger generation, yeah. like, what is this? Let me go find the movies and learn what the whole history is of this. How yeah. great does that feel? 
it's awesome. It's awesome, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, we they were the right place, and uh, they're great people and great people to work with. And, you know, YouTube, there's like, what, 1.8 billion eyeballs on YouTube oh a God. day. It's yeah. the go-to place. So, yeah. in a way, this story is visiting you in your reality, you know, and they could use ads and commercials and, you know, on there and the trailers that drop on there. You're already on it. Yeah. And it's like, you're, it's this thing's playing out in a very real way, you know, where you don't have to go find it over here or yep. there. It's right on what you use every day, and it's... Uh, become an intimate kind of like thing you know well season two is coming out spring of 2019 on youtube we can't wait to see what's going on uh, the next level of johnny on iHeartRadio. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much right, man. nice Appreciate to meet it. you guys man. take care so much, baby. it's eric nagel at new york comic con all right we're back and uh by that music means that it is time to get out of here we're gonna go around and do the plugs before i go to matt og I want to thank, uh, I don't know where he went off to, but Big Kev. Yep. He oh, came yeah. up to the Cosmos interview, and uh, apparently he's got black street cred now, Ooh. thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Nice. And uh, I, I got strong-armed and intimidated. I was the <laughs> only person have. who wasn't physically assaulted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? I kind of wish he hit me, like he hit Eric <laughs> and Kevin. Like, I was like, what, I'm not good enough to get hit? Jeez. You're too pretty, uh. Giddles. Also, I saw on the floor today, uh, Travis. Nice. From the uh, old Opie and Anthony show, yep. currently the EP of the Jim and Sam show on Sirius XM. Apparently they re-signed or they're re-signing yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. But it's all good news. Good. And I hate to see somebody get fired. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that they're going to sign on and everybody keeps their jobs and exactly. whatnot. Uh, Meadow G, what are your plugs? Uh, you can find Geek Stuff each and every week over at bkgeekstuff.com, bkgeekstuff, uh, patreon.com slash bkgeekstuff. Good. Sorry, I just saw. Uh, sorry, I, you're you're at New York Comic Con. There are distractions every once in a what while. What did you just see? Thermos. I'll explain later. The thermos <laughs> as a character. That's great. <laughs> uh, All right. <laughs> Giddles, what do you have? Uh, Giddle based on the Twitter, Instagram, and Xbox Live. Uh, Definitely uh, check out all my con picks and uh, let's play some games soon. There's a new season of Fortnite, some new Overwatch stuff out. Let's, uh, let's hit me up. All right. Am I, am I supposed to take Giddle's mic? You yes, can take, take my Giddle's mic. mic for a second. Kev, we uh, gave you some props earlier about uh -oh. Neil deGrasse Tyson, but uh, we're doing the plugs for the end of the show. What do you want to plug? Uh, BKGeekStuff.com. Good for you, Kev. There Thanks you go. Isn't that, what we're, isn't that what I'm supposed to do, OG? Yes. Yes, that's what you're okay, doing. Okay, just checking. All right. I wasn't assaulted by Neil deGrasse Tyson, so I think you have the win there. <laughs> <laughs> well, get him. And not only assaulted, but then he didn't feel it was loud enough for radio, so he did it again harder. <laughs> so, yes. Mr. Giddles. It was wham, wham. You remember the old uh, jobber from WWF, Barry Horowitz, who would yes. slap his back? Yeah, like yeah. That? That's what he did to me. Uh, for me, it's E-Rock Radio across the board, but for the show, it's it's Eric Nagel across the board on social media. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube and what have you. And if you like the New York Comic Con shows that we did, do us a favor and uh, tell two friends so they can tell two friends, etc., etc., etc. Sweet. Look, this took a lot out of us this yes. last four days. There was a lot. It was a it was a grind. It was a grind. Yeah. Hopefully, there'll be a live show this week, but we're not making any promises. But there may. We yeah, don't know. We'll see. All right, but until to be determined. whenever it happens, until the next time we see you, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And be seeing you. No, that's not what you say. And have a wonderful seeing you. Yeah. We'll be seeing you. Bye. It's Eric Nagel. And that's all the time we have. Follow the show at It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. <clears throat> Unless we do something stupid or...